Hello everybody! Welcome to the God Mode channel. I'm your host, Jaso slash the Wizard slash the DMGM and sometimes MM. Welcome to our Friday night DD games that mixes Dungeons and Dragons, as far as we know, and somewhat into the future. Who knows where that'll go? Uh, along with Oregon Trail style fun. Who else is joining me on this fine Friday evening? Oh well, hey everybody, it's Luke, and I am playing the recently partially blinded. Lankin, who is a Warforged Fey Wanderer Ranger. What's up, guys? My name is Kevin, and I'm playing... Ty... Grab your drink, sir. <laughs> right, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's just... He's holding it. It's scary, Kevin, because we don't know if you're frozen or if you're... <laughs> <laughs> Kevin always has internet issues, so we don't know. Uh, <laughs> the background is still there. So. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm uh, he's, a, he's a, he's a Kalashaw Druid. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name's Slim, and I'll play... Uh, Playing a, uh, <clears throat> a bugbear rogue by the name of uh, Uncle Jimmy with his uh, two new little friends, uh, Squeak and uh, Mr. Scratch, over here. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm playing Professor Burke, Dean of Natural Scientists, Sciences, Professor of Alchemy, Entomology, Flora and Fauna Behavior at the Illustrious Rather Saturna. Hey, guys. It's your girl, Amanda, and I'm playing Opie Sticky Foot. Um, a human swarm keeper ranger. A warrior hey, now. Nick. Oh, that's right. Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I play Forte. He's a dwarven uh, mechanic. He saves uh, the cart and tries to help his friends, uh, the well-wishers, make it from uh, one well to the next. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. This is seven. Uh, I think this is session seven. No, session 18. 18. Yeah. Man, we're just running through them. Uh, a quick couple of housekeeping notes before we dive in. As always, I will always be grateful to Amanda R. Otten for providing the beautiful character art for all of our characters in the campaign that you see next to each of our beautiful faces. The link there posted into the chat is to her Twitter. Go give her some love. Go get your own uh, potential commissions if she's open for them. She does an amazing job, and I love the art. Thank you so much. Um, you can also use Twitch channel points. Some of you may be coming over from our earlier day streams, in which case you've been building up those channel points by hanging out with us. Now's your chance to use them. I know you kept trying to use them for the other game, but they are exclusively for our Friday night Twi uh, Lucent Odyssey game, and now you have the opportunity to dole them out. You can see how many you have down below at the left side of the chat and see what kind of cool stuff you can buy. We also use stream stickers, and we have a huge homebrew list of all kinds of rules and things like that specifically for this campaign. And so, in that case, if you want to check out any of those rules, hit exclamation mark rules and follow that link. Discordian giving me a plus one. <laughs> Thank you, Discordian. Channeling Anna's essence, I see. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can give me plus ones too. I have a higher chance to forget though, so, but I'll, I'll take them, I'll take them. <laughs> um, also, for anybody out there, I do have an open seat on my Thursday night D&D games, which is Rise of the Wild Knot, which is a Spelljammer-centric campaign that's only a handful of sessions in now. We've had Kyle kind of do a feet, uh, seat filling thing, and that was a lot of fun to have him there, uh, but we do have one more spot for anybody else. It is a custom campaign that takes place in our homebrew world, just like Lucent Odyssey does. So if that's something that interests you, you love the Spelljammer setting and uh, want some better content out of it than uh, what uh, Wizards officially released, uh, come over to our campaign. I mix both their content release along with a whole bunch of other stuff from like old Spelljammer, which is really cool. So it's a lot of fun. You should check it out. And uh, if you have questions, hit me up, let me know. Uh, and then, yeah, we play Rigkin, which mixes Dungeons and & Dragons and Monster Raising and Battling, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. in the morning. So if you want to come join there, start your collection, grow your creatures. I spent a lot of time into it. Go check it out. 
Uh, with for without further ado, let's dive into the game itself. I need to hand out some inspiration to some folks, and we'll do some rolling to see who wants to go the recap. But first, for all of you watching, I'm gonna run the intro. Be right back. Oh yeah, no. They're they're narrow situations. It's all about the turn order, which pay, is a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm low person. <laughs> oh, all right. Kyle. Yes. Yeah, Professor Bark, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, let us know the recap on what happened last week on. Usum to Odyssey. Well, as I recall, we had just barely avoided a deadly patch of mushrooms. Mushrooms? That would drive us all some sort of crazy <laughs> when we rounded the bin on the Radiant Well. Um, our newly crowned frog warrior and uh, Sir Lincoln went up and scouted out the area a little bit, found out that we were in for the same old same, which is to say, a lot of healing. Too much healing. As we released the well, the light, the radiant light filled us and summoned some nasty creatures about. <clears throat> um, after, let's see, what was it? We held them off for a couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> after we, and then we closed the well, restoring some of the light balance to the, uh, I always forget the first part, something cradle. Uh, Celestial Crater, this is a Forlorn Passage, yeah. Forlorn uh, hel passage. Helping some light to come in and do the equilibrium thing, you're right. Yes. Um... Uh, yeah. So after we... did the Radiant Well stuff, uh, we thought... we thought it better... that we just teleport ourselves back to the Helper's Hand Guild. We sustained a lot of damage. A lot of people, um... Not looking so good. It Look burns. at me. My beard, it's it's a little bit singed. I had That's to get it taken care of immediately. Just how your face always looks though. Oh, there was there was stuff in here. There were flowers. It, it was burns. Good. It was Everything burns. Oh yeah. Tyna got like third and first degree burns. He's pretty much Charles. But anyways, we turned to the helper's hand. And after healing, I think we finished healing. <laughs> So we, blind. The path is ahead of us. And where we go, we have not decided. So, yes, you last left off. Now we had two characters. Uh, Serene, your contact in this region, was able to summon a couple other Serenidal members who were able to see to the wounds from the Radiant Well of members who could be able to remove them from some standard magical healing. So they were taken care of. However, we had two members who were more uh, severely impacted in both Lincoln and Uncle Jimmy. And in that case, Serene said, you'll need to stay here for at least a night. I'm going to try and contact a more powerful healer to hopefully come over and try to see to the issues that you two are having in the meantime make yourselves uh, at home here you're more than welcome to the facilities and when you are ready you can continue to explore here or the previous area but when you need to she has marked on your map the next helper's hand in the next region that lies up ahead 
Now you still had a couple quests to deal with here and you're still waiting on a healer to come in. However, after your uh, tough battle at the Radiant Well, you all gathered a certain amount of experience in the process and have leveled up. Would each of you like to share anything fun that your character's got on your level up? You don't have to, but if there's anything cool you got that you'd like to let us know about, then tell me. Uh, yeah, Bart is advanced in another druid level. Which means I get the best skill ever. <laughs> That's we all right. know what it is. You know it. Bark knows it. It's Bark skin. Oh. 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 <laughs> <That's right. a laughs> it's so good. Hard to be Moonbeam. I mean, it's okay. It's not even that. Great. It's all right, but it's really not that great. Uh, it's just a meme we have. At it's this the point. best. Yeah. Um. I, I upgraded my spell list, my spell list hunter's mark, which is called favored foe. So now my my favored foe deals as much damage as a hunter's mark, which is pretty good. Nice. Um, I'm also blind, so I can't throw my dagger anymore. So I'm using a rapier for for a, a, a little stint. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I think that's everything I got, though. OK the uh time behind a uh cart and horse uncle jimmy now has expertise and he has expertise in animal handling and uh sleight of hand both oh. useful things to have i know i forgot i forgot the most important thing lincoln's now a creepy spindly bone spider i have 35 feet walking speed and an equal amount of climbing and swimming speed so Settling. I'm just going to be climbing on ceilings and stuff the whole time. It'll be just, great. He has are, are you track. like a water walker? You just walk on top of the water with your yeah, skinny like, legs? Yeah, just like four, four like bone spurs stick out of the bottom and I go across like a water glider. Sure, why yeah. not? Coolest That's characters, creepy. dude. Too it's creepy. Horrible. Time became a little bit more healy. Got my aura vitality. Another level three spell. Gross. <laughs> and I, I, I switched up Summon Beast for Summon Fey. Oh, hey. Yo. Works for this campaign. I like it. Nice, nice, nice. Manager, did Opie get anything cool on level up? Uh, not really. He got one more um, favored enemy and favored terrain. What did you choose? What's the next terrain going to be, Jason? <laughs> let's, well, let, let's, let's let Amanda tell us first. I picked, I picked a forest because I didn't, couldn't really... Okay, okay. Desert! And then for um, favorite enemy, it's humanoids, humans, and dwarves. Forte. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> I don't trust that, Mr. Forte. <laughs> and he um, speaks dwar dwarvish now. I just... <laughs> <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, maybe Forte, like, taught him. You have to know the language of the enemy. Yeah, that kind of <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> the old Sith pass, path, uh, kill your master, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are spending several days walking along a long trail in nearby a wagon, so you're making a lot of, like, small talk back and forth. That makes sense. Yeah, he's learning a lot about doors. Yeah. How to, yeah. Ki how to kill him. How to kill him. <laughs> I mean, it's like that really hurt Forte when he hurt his ankle going over that log. I'm just going to write that down here. Such a uh, bad influence. Did Uncle Jimmy get anything good? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I said earlier, yeah, he's a sleight of hand. In, uh, oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. He's an expert. Nice. Uh, Rag Zero gave you a plus one, Lincoln. Oh, nice. Uh, Regzer says, blind dude need help. <laughs> yeah. Back. Uh, is Opie um, hurt in any way? Opie was hurt, uh, you know, uh, a small degree enough where a couple Cerunodils coming in and providing you some healing magic would take care of it. So you're you're fine. Okay. Don't forget to update your... Um... Your HP, everybody. Yeah, I'm trying to keep these tokens like the main thing I use instead of copy pasting and making you have to reset the HP a lot. So if you update those tokens on this map, I'm going to try and take those everywhere we go. Nice. Uh, 
The trick to killing dwarves is to smash the eggs before they hatch. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. That's what I was just... Yeah. Like, what kind of knowledge... What kind of dwarven do you actually speak? Because you think dwarves are hatched. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a Swedish chef version of dwarven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who thinks it's that uh, people that wake up from a head injury and think they can speak another language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Opie. Oh, it's, it's great. Love it. Um, so, um, between Lincoln, I know your effect that you have affecting you, Lincoln, with your impaired vision. Um, remind me if you know, Uncle Jimmy, what I think you were suffering from. Was it blisters or something else? This was blisters. Mine blisters was again. Okay. okay. But mine got, have... uh, mine got healed, if I'm correct. Yeah, no, I had the other. I have third degree bones. Oh, yeah. you're the one with the more yeah. uh, severe. Okay, okay. That was my mistake then. So yeah, you Uncle know, Jimmy, was... you've seen this before. You actually got a couple of these blisters back when you first faced the initial well in the uh, first uh, zone. So you uh, received some healing and you're fine. Tyne, you're the one who has some very stinging, uh, deep, deep wounds in these third degree burns from the just pure radiance of the positive energy plane leaking through and thus you were the one who is going to need some extra help um, you all spent I'd say what's a, probably like uh, I'm going to say a couple hours and I'm just going to say unless anybody wants to do anything we're going to say a day passes so I can bring us outside of uh, or not not a full 24 hours but maybe like 12 hours at least because right now we're at 2 blight time and so I'm going to say unless anybody wants to do anything specific we'll roll back to light time so probably another 11 or so hours to put us exactly at 12. Uh, housekeeping Forte needs to forge Lankin the the Meteor. blade for the what are you using a rapier now? A, a rapier, but it's only for a level. I thought you were gonna make a warhammer for yourself. Well, yeah, I can I can do that. I have the material. We were workshopping where I have the materials to just make a generic rapier, but I can also forge the hammer with the meteorite. So oh I, right, yeah, that's I right. Just the basic time. rapier, yeah. Off, it could be off screen. I just want to have that. I, sure. I that we did it. I already subtracted the like all the hunting traps we need to disassemble the okay. metal for it. Okay. So over this period of time, while most of you are likely resting, unless you want to do anything in specific, and during this time, even during blight time, at least here at the Helper's Hand Guild, there is this area that is closed in with like a ten foot tall wooden wall that seems pretty secure in terms of any of the crazy wild stuff in this area busting into it and similar to the very first region's helper's hand there's many merchants and things in this kind of open area that uh it makes up the the, the back end where people come through and buy provisions or supplies do their trading there's not a ton of there are adventures that come through the passage but it seems at least from everything that you've all gathered that it's mostly just well-to-do rangers and uh merchants and travelers who are coming here to hopefully find some items and resources that may be not found as easily or is more rare outside of the passage that they can make you know some money on it's dangerous to come here but they get some spoils in return uh, but you don't see a ton of just like adventurers passing through that's the reason why everyone you know sees your group as something a little more safe and protective than others but you have a skill set that's a little higher above than most um so there's plenty of merchants and stuff in the back here there's there's plenty of torch light and things lit up to keep the area um safe from the blight that has rolled through here so there's plenty of light and stuff both inside and out of the lodge and back in area where the trade and, and mercantile is happening you grab these hunting traps forte and after getting a couple hours of sleep decide to head out to the nearby blacksmith's area who is able to uh on the word of the sort of console of this region of the serenital serene allows you to use the forge and i'm going to ask for you to make me some type of check 
are you is it is it a situation where you're like skilled with forging things what 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 makes what makes forte good at forging i'm i'm gonna it's a smith it's a class ability Uh uh uh-huh uh especially for non-magical items will drop it the artisan's blessing that forge clerics get allow me to essentially transmute 100 gold worth of iron or metal materials into another thing of equal or lesser value once per uh channel divinity he, he prays it together I, yeah, I basically pray that the uh the forge gods allow me to craft it and it happens okay There's... so that's pretty sick uh feeling at home here forte with an anvil nearby set up on a sturdy stump uh, next to the warm heat of a nearby forge you praying to your god have we ever determined the god that uh, forte worships forte's not necessarily religious as okay. a cleric he just lives by the forge the anvil the heat the mountain everything is just kind of natural and he pays homage to the spirits and the ancestors as he strikes his mallet to craft stuff Forte has one of those coexist stickers on the back of his pants. That's pretty he... much it, yeah. He's spiritual, dude. Not religious. <laughs> uh, feeling here at home with the warmth of the forge, Forte, you are able to use some of your tools, gathering a hammer, and begin smithing away. Now, you have the natural ability given to you by some divine nature you're not sure where it comes from you don't necessarily believe in any particular god out there but it is uh, through your skill that you are given this gift of some higher power that you uh, no matter who it comes from you promise to use it to the best of your ability and the skill set that you you owe to yourself and thus you forge away you don't have to forge you can just naturally transmute it through this skill that you have as a forge cleric however forging makes you feel like you're more in your natural element and the process goes much faster as you sort of smash after you uh, put the blade and begin to work on it shaping it in such a way with your hammer and melting it to uh, the degree to which you feel it is sharp enough to cut into foes using both the mixture of your smithing and sort of the divine nature as you watch it being shaped almost uh, supernaturally so along with your strikes of your hammer as you temper the steel and it takes only probably a couple hours till six blight time uh, that you have finished forging this blade you've used the uh what was it the the star metal right and uh thus was it the star metal or is this was this just a normal rapier? this is just a normal one for yeah me. okay okay the, the cool thing with artisan's blessing the class ability is it it does all that for for free with the transmute but it has to be a non-magical item so the oh star i metal see okay it's gonna be with the traditional forge sure thing uh in that case you forge a very sharp looking a standard looking rapier but uh something that should certainly suit lincoln well it hits six blight time you can put another ticker on the uh harmonic flux which by the way has been reset to 100 because the party uh i'd say subtract two because the party's been resting here for at least a couple hours so it should be at like 98 but it's still pretty Terrible. high out there Terrible things just happened to the tracker because <laughs> Noodle's butt was on. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Control the, uh, Z. Control Z a lot. As, uh, as he's uh, heading out there, could I uh, steal him for one second? Yeah, you probably an hour or so in as you're just taking some time, maybe stepping outside to, uh, you know, burn a cigar and look up at the stars and consider some of the things that you have to do for yourself along with the others in your party you see forte uh finishing off the last bits of his weapon kind of wiping it off with a cloth and pulling it up to the sky where there's some light and the torchlight hitting it to see how sharp it is you can come over that's uh that's looking pretty good buddy hey thank you this um it's kind of like my it's my thing that I do is that makes me so happy is that I like to to make to craft the things and now I can give this blade to 
a worthy champion that can do so much with it. It's like an instrument that, uh, you know, a musician can play. He can do so many things and hopefully not stab us with it. Yeah, you, you, you know, I, I, uh, I feel kind of the same way. That's kind of how I got into, repped into all this. It's the thrill of the hunt, it, uh, after a good uh, job, I feel... Uh, feel complete i feel like uh, a good hard day's work you know tracking something down and uh doing what uh i need to do but uh if you have just a little extra scrap now i'd be willing to toss you some coin or something for it uh i got uh a little something for opie and it needs uh, a home if you will a small metal cage if you will hey okay um let me look here i have I, I think I have, yes. I've got, uh, well, I have me my old hammer that I don't need anymore. That would work. Uh, I also have uh, hunting traps that I could easily turn into something that holds. Uh, I have uh, plenty of things there, but a uh, simple cage should not be a lot of materials. I, I'm pretty sure I can get that done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if you could, uh, uh, buy um, simple cage just bisect in the, the center. So uh, I don't want them uh, proliferating, if you will. Oh yes, uh, I've I've made uh, several little holding pens and things like that in my travels. I can easily get that done. I have two channel divinities for long rest now, so I can do oh, this twice. Wonderful. That'd be uh, that'd be really nice. Like I said, I got you. Uh, I'll get you for a drink or something next time, if you uh, if you will. Yes, uh, give me something to chase with the tanker. That'd be great. For sure. All right. Hey, I'm gonna you, you work on that. I'm gonna go find the kid. Uh, See if I can find him at some point. Give him his uh, I'll make present. It, I'll make it decorative. You have uh, any any sort of uh, special design? You want any uh, filigree or anything on it? Uh, a, a double mesh on the cage. I uh, don't know uh, how razor sharp the fangs are. They tend to scuttle out, you know. E extra extra reinforcement. You, I I understand. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you need me, I'll be here. This makes me very happy. Absolutely. Maybe I'll bring the drink out to you to celebrate. It's uh, ritualistic crafting, essentially. Everything is wiped down. Everything is placed meticulously on the mat. Everything is... Uh, like a surgeon. I, yeah. I can appreciate that. That's why uh, I always try to make sure I bring a, a little bit of a trophy back from uh, whatever we, uh, you know, he's going to do the, uh, like, kill gesture. All right, thanks. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, Jimmy's gonna head back to either the inn or wherever we're at and try to look for Opie at some point. Um, probably. What 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 uh, would Opie be up to at six o'clock blight time? Um, in town, we just came back from a battle. I don't know. I mean, we can just say that you you run into Opie then, if you if you want. Uh... It'd probably be at the restaurant eating or something. The inn. Perfect. I'm gonna sneak up uh, behind him and uh, tap him doing, on the shoulder. Doing a mixture of both eating like a big loaf of bread and then occasionally shoving some into his pocket for later use with business bill. Oh, yeah. I see, that's good. You might want to save some of that food, kid. I got something for you. Oh, for me? Since you, uh, you're a real man now, you, 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 you passed your trials, you're uh, a real uh, frog warrior. Next step for you is uh, we know you know how to kill things, you're, you're all grown up, is responsibility, right? You got me? Uh, okay, what if. He, sure. Happened to uh, find you a little gift. Uh, this is a uh, scruff and uh, scratch. They are uh, two uh, baby, small, giant space hamsters for you, Ed. <laughs> oh. God. Um. So you hand them to me, like in the cage. They're they're loose now, I guess, until he's done forging the uh, cage. Okay. Yeah. The guy. Uh, a guy in town was. Uh, you know, 
peddling a few, and uh, I, I think it would be a good step for you. I mean, it's, uh, they're, they're good pets. They're good pets. And I don't know if they like the the other ones. They get big and scary. I don't know if they say the small, but they, uh, it's responsibility. You take care of them. <sighs> okay. Yeah. This is str this is stressful, you know, King Toad. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I, I was carrying around King Toad for like a week and that was really stressful. Exactly. So you can take care of a uh, a king in your pocket for a week. Two uh two little uh goblins right here. They uh they shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, OP takes them and like immediately is like playing with them. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know how big Spe speaks with animals. <laughs> I don't know how big a little giant hamster is. So. Uh, the size of a miniature giant space hamster is the size of a normal hamster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he like makes room for him in like his pocket. They begin to sort of like quickly shift around on their tiny little feet, their big beady eyes staring around the room. You can see their big buck teeth as they sort of sniff at each other and uh, kind of crawl around on your arms as you kind of cup them together to create a small little area for them to move around in. We cast speak with animals. <laughs> oh my god. You cast... You cast... Um, Opie, you seeing these cute little critters, you decide to cast uh, Speak with Animals. Hey guys, um, I'm gonna take care of you now. <laughs> One of the nearby hamsters kind of bounds up closer to your face and lifts up its head to sniff at you. You can see its big old teeth and it says, Hey, hey, you got food? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I love the voice though. Hey. I just heard hey. Hey, you got food? Uh, uh sure. I have these. Uh, um, shit. he breaks off like some bread and whatever else he's eating, some vegetables and stuff, and he just like puts it in his pocket for them. Oh yeah, that's a good bro, bro. Come over here. This is a good stuff. <laughs> They you crawl over. Really, you have a really deep voice for a little hamster. Do I? <laughs> well, I guess I've never heard the voice of another hamster, so I don't know. Huh. Okay. Well, is that good? Are you are you scratch or are you scratch? I'll be whatever one you want me to be if you keep feeding me food. <laughs> Okay. He put some more food in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Scritch it is. <laughs> He's all blacked out, voice is muffled. That's when I saw the killer. Stepped into the room. <laughs> uh Opie well, feeds thank some hamsters. Thank you, Uncle Zimmy. I'll I'll take care of him. Yeah, no problem, kid. I'm glad you like him. Alright, you take care of him if uh I'll try to uh, keep an eye out, get you some extra food every now and then, but uh, you did a good job out there. Proud of you. I'm just trying my best. Jimmy's going to head back to his room and just kind of hang out, I guess, for the rest of the day. Or grab a drink if he can and bring it out to uh, Forte when he's done. And... Sure. Um, Professor Bark, didn't you also buy some hamsters? Oh, yes, well, you know. What are you doing yours? <laughs> I think I only bought the one. Okay, what are you doing with your one? Um... We uh, zoom well, in to br we zoom into his room, he's got like fur in his mouth. delicacy, <laughs> 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 Actually, you know what, let's see. One of those free six, it's a tummy oh my tree. God. Good God. Um, does it, I feel conflicted. I shouldn't have made such a wide gap. 
Let's do that with a two instead. Uh, yeah. There it goes. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> no. I've made everyone snacks. <laughs> All right. I won't ask any further questions about four organizations. Jason's like, "All right, let's move past it." <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that story arc as is. <laughs> oh man. I bring him out to Porte and I, I say, "Were you? Did you need an assistant for the fort? I brought snacks, by the way." <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Professor, if uh, you are well versed in the, uh, you know, the expertise of uh, bringing to life many of the the shapes of uh, stone and metal. If not, I more than appreciate your eye and your coaching. Uh, make whatever you need here and uh, yeah the delicacy uh, what did what did you prepare here what the is this local fare giant miniature space hamster I believe is what it's called I believe I've had this I uh, tried to eat it it's very gamey yeah, I, I don't know it, it. I, I don't know anything about the forge but I, I I made these tools and you look at these tools are perfectly crafted like as in textbook oh because uh, that's what he can do is make tools I, I don't know how to use them but i i could try and help well I, i'll give you a quick tutorial here i'll what i'll have you do is prepare a few of the little pieces that i'm making here and then i'll uh put the finishing touches on it to make sure they're all bound nice and tight and then uh you can present the finished materials to uh uncle jimmy to make sure he signs off and everything is all good Yes, okay. I guess mechanically I was offering assistance when you make your mall, but I did did you already do that though? I haven't made it yet. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna have to pay for it to get forged or if I'm gonna have to roll for it to get forged or uh like if you're not tools. using your if you're not using your like uh transmutation abilities then you could still use this forge. Uh you would just actually need to make a check to see uh, you know, if you could do it and how long it would take yeah if it's a magical plus one it, I wouldn't be able to use artisan's blessing to do it so gotcha. I'd have to yeah. manually craft it that's fine if you wanted to do that you could check and see and it's up to you when you want to do that and um, while I'm while I'm here I'm already I'm in the groove I've already crafted two things might as well All right. try and do the third one you go to your cart that is stabled um over in the front area of the helper's hand guild and pull off this like football sized but it's got some heft to it kind of throw it under an arm as you uh, bring this almost like obsidian but reflective rock over to the anvil slap it on top and take a little bit to study it shifting it around with your two gloved hands and just beginning to suss out exactly how you need to carry about this um are you trained in any? What are, what are your kits? What are your what's your kit stuff? Brewer supplies, carpenters tools, smithing tools. All right, I'm gonna say like we do in our campaigns is our sort of alternative uh, homebrew ruling. You are trained in smithing tools, which means you likely use these in most of your everyday things. So I prefer for you to pick a skill that you're gonna be good at, and go ahead and give me a roll with advantage since you do this every day there should be minimal chance for you to fail skill that i'm good at um like what would what skill um would apply for you using smithing tool athletics swing in that hammer yeah athletics would work i think so athletics um, is a plus two what do you got what do you what do you my, got my good. biggest ones are insight medicine survival mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not. He's not really skill based. Um, let me do. Is, your, is plus two your best <coughs> skill? Otherwise, because plus, maybe plus two crazy. athletics would be my best. Yeah, perception plus three. He's he doesn't really animal handling plus three. He's not really. I'd say your wisdom than strength. Oddly enough, because dwarves can wear the plate without having the strength requirement. So I dumped. I'd say athletics. Um, I'd even take a history. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'd take a sleight of hand. 
That's a zero. <laughs> Religion or arcana? <laughs> Negative ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say those are probably the ones that make the most sense. Okay. Hey, at least you have advantage. Use those plus ones. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You have advantage yeah. on it. Yeah. I have advantage, and uh, it's going to be a plus two then. So, sure. We'll uh, we'll pull from the history of all the things that I've made and seen made to see if I can craft something good. And this is at advantage. So, uh, I don't think I I do have a plus one. So I'll add a plus one to it. Nice. Just right now. So call it in the air. Thank you, chat. <laughs> That's a 13. All right. With a 13, it's as you begin to grab your tools and begin trying to work with this uh, pretty tough metal, right? Um, it's not too different from what you've worked with before, but there's a certain hardiness to it that you didn't expect. Probably the reason that it's able to last out there amongst the stars to be able to fall down here and still be in one relative piece. It's less a situation, Forte, of you being able to actually do have the know-how to craft it. It's just how much time it takes for you to be able to carefully handle something that's a little different than what you're used to dealing with. So it takes you... Um, takes you five hours, putting us to 11 blight time. So that's another tick off the harmonic flux, so it should be at 97. But at the end of that wiping the sweat off your brow and feeling not not mechanically exhausted but you know a little exerted of spending so much time at the forge uh you feel accomplished though as you using that uh cloth to sort of wipe the uh are you what weapon is this that you're making this your is this your uh warhammer it's going to be, it's going to be a warhammer yeah some uh dwarves and uh forge clerics get proficiency so yeah, you uh, you use a, a napkin to kind of, or not a napkin, but a cloth to wipe off the war hammer here and hold it up and see that it's got, uh, it's it's this like pure black at the top where it meets the hilt and it's got this kind of cool looking reflection to it that reflects the environment around it. Um, as you hold it up to the stars, it almost looks like the mallet disappeared. Like to me. Um, you kind of sw swing, swing and swivel it around in your in your hand as you kind of grip it tight, and um, have a plus one maul now, or a warhammer rather. Ah, uh, nope. Call it Starfall. Ooh, good oh, name. that's cool. I'm All right. Add that in plus one warhammer and equip it. Mm -hmm. Lincoln, we now have a spare one. If we need a spare warhammer for anything, I have the regular one. Lincoln looks at his rapier and says, "I will call it blade." <laughs> also, very ingenious. I uh, I hope that the blade carries you through many stories and adventures, and uh, it brings you a lot of happiness. I hope I kill many things with it. You can do that as well. Lincoln's got like a. Like from fucking Bird Box, whatever that fucking movie is, he's just got a thing of cloth <laughs> tied around his eyes right now. Was that Bird Box? Was that the name of the movie? No, oh, yeah, it was Bird yeah. Box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the... yeah I think so. Yep, I remember the headline: "People Die Bird Box Challenge." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, Bark offers you a savory treat, Lincoln, oh. to enjoy. He does. I don't remember if you eat or not. I don't. I I don't. Okay, never mind. We'll track that. Would you like me to chew it for you? No, that's all right. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. It doesn't have a tongue or a palate. It would fall. It would fall out <laughs> underneath the opening in his jaw. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, well, well, I guess everybody's sort of together while we're all making these uh, items, right? Mm-hmm. Lincoln says, friends. When we arrive at the next Serenitals Guild Hall, we need to spend the night. I am expecting a message. Very well. I don't see any problem with that. A good night's yeah. rest always serves us well. Good. Good. I think it will lead us to more adventure. 
<laughs> can we do That's anything to help you other than just stay there? Is it like uh No. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Please please stow blade, it's okay. I'm just <laughs> Just staying the night will be fine. The vision, it came to me in a dream. I thought you couldn't see right now. It came to me in a dream. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, nothing. Imagination. Imagination. Of... Oh, shit. Make somebody but before dreams then neat. oh what dreams neat okay cool <laughs> but before that i am looking forward to anointing blade in the blood of the savages at karnak yeah i'm down for that too we will rid the land of their evil yes or good whatever they're doing there we'll stop it <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a giant skull on the map. It can't be good, I guess. <laughs> all, all of my best friends live in skulls. <laughs> They're good people. They're good people on both sides. <laughs> um, what, uh, have we stayed long enough? Are we departing? At this <laughs> um, just as the darkness begins to part, as light time gives way to light time and as you see the coalescing up above of several glitokin gathering gathering together as light time comes around oh don't want to make the whole thing that color we make green color um you each see that nearby stepping out of the sort of open back end that leads into this open area that is surrounded by the walls that make up the safety of the interior of the guild house you see serenay coming down her long soft black hair running back all the way down to close to her waist and covering a bit of the side of her face uh, her pale skin that much more pale here in the outside light uh, of the twilight that sort of hits her she steps on over seeing both you tyne and lincoln and says I have been able to procure a healer with more powerful remedies however they only have supplies for one of the two I hate to say it but I'm afraid you will have to choose between the two of you at least for now in terms of the limits what me and the other surrenders can provide for. I will abstain. There are other ways that I can be healed, Lincoln says cryptically. My, my, my burns will fade with time and healing. Your eyesight is much more important. It is fine. I am far from defenseless. I insist. The last piece of cheese on the charcuterie board. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last piece of pizza. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, if neither of you want it, my beard could use a nice <laughs> one. <laughs> no. What? Mechanically. Yeah, mechanically, couldn't Tyne and I just pump thousands of healing per round into him to heal him? Or I need 10 successful medicine checks once oh. a day. So, like, Oh, okay, I never mind. Get there without that's, any magical that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a lot, a long dude. Time. I'm I'm garbage at perception anyway because I'm a skeleton. Mm -hmm. So I, I and I just got a weapon to mitigate the weakness from the partial blindness. So I am a okay from a mechanic standpoint for time to take this and just get healed from the from the burns. I mean, if everyone yeah. thinks that's best course of action. Yeah, that's you fine. you're extremely valuable in keeping everybody healthy and happy. So it used to be fuller, you see. It was <laughs> um, Serenay looks over Tyne and says, "So then, um, 
Would you like to have the restorative capabilities given to you then? I suppose it is my turn, yes. All right. Uh, she I'll turns. Blow my back then. <laughs> <laughs> she turns back to you, Lincoln, and says, "My apologies." It is fine. One could even say that it was meant to be. Lincoln continues cryptically. Uh, she I says, like "I hear crackling in a. It's like a, th- a thunder crack in the back." <laughs> he says, uh, "That is good to hear. Then, I wish." For you to find a place in the future where you can receive quick healing. Tyne, if you wouldn't mind coming with us. The process will take an hour, but the severe burns your body has taken should be healed. Afterwards, around with you. <laughs> yeah, afterwards, she says, um, you're welcome to gather whatever supplies left that you need. The guild house is always yours. You well-wishers are doing a great service to the passage, and I i am deeply thankful that sacrifices greatly appreciated. Well then, come with me, Time. Just giving a hand. Time begins to follow, and they disappear back into the guild house. Uh, about an hour passes, putting you at one light time, and time you lay down on this soft bed in one of the more private rooms on the first floor of the guild house, which is like a like a basically large mountain lodge, and they're surrounded by a number of different. Uh, stuffed soft pillows and things like that to ease the pain of your body having these burns a very tall um somewhat muscular actually serenital male comes in looks like a elven uh species and raises his hands up to you and over the hour begins this soft slow restorative energy your burns Although there's not actually anything being put on it, the searing burns that have just been this constant pain, it's been hard for you to sleep. Um, The burns actually almost feel like they have like a gel or a soft cool liquid applied to them as the healing properties begin to restore it. And as you look down, you watch at a rapid rate as the burnt skin that went down so deep to the third degree that you can see the relatively reddish nature of what lies underneath begins to lighten up in color as the restorative nature begins to essentially hyperactivate your healing capabilities in the cells in your body and you watch as your flesh essentially regrows. After the hour, the figure finally stops pulling his hands back and looks to you and says, take a second to step up, walk around. If you need anything else, let me know. Otherwise, the process should be finished. Tyne stretches, and it just feels good to be able to move his skin without feeling that burning. Yeah, you uh, you you take a second, um, afraid that you may feel the stinging pain as you sort of stretch your muscles out, but that pain is no longer there, and you feel like you're waking up from a long nice nap and it feels good to stretch your body out heal it again oh thank you Mm. it really feels so much better of course let me know if you need anything else and he opens the door and waves a hand you're able to rejoin the group um, everyone kind of doing your own thing after this hour passes. Time comes back and you all recollect here in the main area of the sort of lodge that's sort of this open space that has this sort of built in floor down into it that goes down like probably a four or so feet that's just filled with different pillows and stuff. A very relaxing atmosphere, a very, very different setting compared to the rugged and dangerous nature of the rest of the passage. Probably done so purposefully so that at least here 
you can get some respite from the dangers that lie outside. Um, and probably matches to the whole uh, philosophy of the Serenitals, who are focused on the health of both the body and mind and spirit of the individuals that they take care of. So a place that is uh, somewhere where you can center yourselves and be at peace uh, in the sort of tepid nature of the rest of this passage. Uh, so with that, Ty rejoins the group. And what would you all like to do? The ball is in your court. Uh, you know that there are some merchants and stuff here if you need to try and grab anything. Otherwise, you have some itinerary still left to do. You have the ability to traverse to any previous visited Helper's Hand Guild because of the blessing of Serenay. And there may be another blessing from whomever may be up ahead at the next Helper's Hand. You're unsure. Uh, the ball is in your court. It is open-ended. You tell me. So, Lincoln, that's why I thought you were this guy we knew, because you would just stand there like a bunch of bones, because he didn't pay up, and we filled his giant metal greaves full of cement and just stuck him out there, and he was just kind of hanging out for a couple weeks. I, I, I thought you were him one night. That's why I was really kind of standoffish when I first met you. Sorry about that. Maybe I am him. Uh, well, I, I guess I'm going to be sleeping with one eye open. Uh, no offense. Don't understand. I don't have eyes. That's that's what kind of scares me. But I always am watching. <laughs> Lincoln scuttles off on all four. <laughs> like a fucking cockroach. It's great. Uh, to to Karnak then. I believe so. Uh, stop stop them blight collars and whatever good slash bad they're doing. Who? They're probably calling blight or something like that. <laughs> What's going well, on at Karnak? They're bad guys. We learned about them like five sessions ago. I forget what their whole deal was, but uh, you guys bad. were you were told about a group who is all throughout the passage, but is um, concentrated here in the Grey Doldrums, a group known as the Blightners. They Blightners. they worship the dark side of the passage and want it to continue to take over the light, to uh, unend the balance and um, erupt through the passage. That's what you've heard. It actually sounds pretty cool. I'm having <laughs> second thoughts. It is, does seem to be antithetical to our cause. Maybe it is a good place to go. If it is antithetical, then we must kill them. We must. We must remove them from this land. By killing them. Um... I might have to restock... Well, no. Yeah. Um, is there anything um, we need to buy? Yes, I was thinking, well, Professor Box, remember Professor Box's rules to exploration. Food, everyone has food, good water, shoes, clean socks, and does everyone have a health potion on them? Uh, oh, check, yeah. check, and more check. Uh, um, I don't wear shoes, so... I don't oh. think the socks apply to me. That is going to be a deduction on your final grade, but that's okay. I got I everything I need. Yeah, I, uh, I, mean, I could I use a potion if we one. have one. But uh, we should all have at least one healing oh. potion on us. Oh, um, Professor, um, quickly, uh, or he's going to hold up one of the potions. Uh, do these have an uh, expiration date? Is this bad? Should I throw this away? Uh, uh, yeah, if you, if they only last a day. Okay, I'm gonna delete a couple of these off my thing that I never used. Uh, yeah. Or actually, do it? No, yeah, because as soon as I make another one, the last one. Is okay. Let's remind, go. Which reminds me, did everybody have a potion? I do not. I, I don't. I do, yeah. Well, we should buy one for everybody. Is my All point. right. How much? How much for a potion? Standard potion, price: please. fifty gold pieces. That's too much. No right. potion for me, thank you. Well, maybe not then. Very good. <laughs> uh, Let's go. Let's away go. Away to the manger. 
All right. Does lay. Uh, bidding farewell to Ilana Lu, and seeing that you have the location of Karnak on your map, and hearing that it is a place of strain that is being caused within the region, you decide to head that way in an attempt to put down those who would try to bring forth more of the darkness. You begin to head that way. Um, did we still have that star metal, or is that what used Forte it. used? Okay, that's what I thought. Forte has forged that into his warhammer. Alright, because that was and taking up 50 pounds. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. Dang. Um, does it weigh what a normal hammer? Now that you've no? now that you forged it, it's probably a little bit heavier, but not not enough to mechanically give a shit about it. Okay, that was my next thing. Like, can I still weld it or wield it? Yeah, yeah, it or, it's okay. got some heft to it. it. It almost feels it. It would probably be a little more impractical if it was a blade, but as a warhammer, because it's got some more weight, as you sort of swing it across, it it kind of pulls your hand with it. Probably hit a bad guy pretty hard, which gives it its plus one. Uh, very, very good weight and balance to this one. Uh, all right, you all begin to trek. Ping me. Pingus. <laughs> Pingus. Uh, you uh, move along. Uh, go ahead. No, it's all right. I was just wondering if we could move through there as fast as other terrain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's uh, a swamp ranger over here. Yeah, that's what I yeah. was just remembering. Oh, uh, before we leave. Uh, hey, uh, Forte, can you do that, uh, magic make food thing and fill up the chum buckets on our, uh, our cart so we're good? Uh, yeah, if we long rest it, I get to redo my spells, so I can, I think I do have it actually cooked up. Let me see here. Could we say retroactively, since we were there for a little time, that he did it at least once to fill up? Uh, the sure, sure. I'll charge it. I'll charge a level three spell slot. The um, chum buckets. Oh, I can manage. I don't have to go all the way into the builder to change my spells. I'm an idiot. Amazing. <laughs> Love casters. <laughs> all those features and more as D&D Beyond improves. Stay tuned for more news. All right, uh, you move a space and Forte fills the chum bucks before you leave. Uh, another tick off of the harmonic flux man as it moves to three light time. It is here as you trek along the path, still largely on a raised, almost like plateau area that is pushed out of the relatively flat plain that makes up this area of the passage known as the Grey Doldrums. There's actually there's a lot of uh, dust and dirt here as you follow along the path, but it's at least it's not trekking through the sort of muck and mire that is a large portion of the, the swamp at large. As you travel along, you see passing by on horseback what appears to be a member of the Serenitals. Uh, she wears Serenital garb and um, looks like she has uh, some kind of dust and dirt and grime on her outfit like she's probably gotten dirty and uh, been out in the swamps and as she passes she says hail travelers what path do you take east to Karnak she takes a second as she kind of pulls uh, out a pack of rations and takes a bite and says uh I believe you be the well-wishers. We be yes. that. I, I, uh, a member of the Serenitals, I received word about your, uh, attempts to hopefully put an end to those at Karnak. I've been doing some researching and intel about the Blightners myself. A thing that you should understand before you head that way. Within Karnak. Oh, go ahead. Jason, you may need to reconnect. You're kind of yeah. breaking up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let me back out. Eat it. <laughs> Hello? Thanks. Hello? Hello? Any better? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So um, she says, I was told that you were 
given information about the peril from those Blightners at Karnak and wanted to provide you intel before you traveled and traversed too far away from the Guildhouse. You see, within Karnak is housed the headquarters of the Blightners. However, I've learned from the information that I've gathered that the entryway through within the front is, at least from the intel I gathered, said to be guarded relatively heavily. Those that I've sent that way to gather information, you have returned. And those that do seem changed. However, the intel that I have gained leads me to believe there may be an alternative path. Before making their headquarters in Karnak, the Blightners used another location, a place in an abandoned mine nearby here, known as the Drowned Mines. It's still said that they occasionally were holding meetings there. There may be some form of perhaps information or item you may find there, perhaps a key through the front doors or... Uh, some info regarding the defenses or capabilities of the place. Perhaps an alternative way to reach it altogether. It's up to you which way you'd like to take it. I fear the drowned mines have been abandoned for some time, and if the Blightners are still using it as a base of some sorts, I'm not sure how, as I've heard word that there are hostile creatures that have taken that as their own territory. I leave it to you to make that decision. I just wanted to pass along the information before you trek too far out. Can you mark this mine on our map? Uh, she nods and says, I, and she kind of takes your map and marks down the drowned mine. Mm. Well then, uh, I need to head back to the guild house. Best of luck to you on your travels. Safe travels. He nods and kind of pulls at the uh, the reins. Let's continue. As she's pulling off, I want to give her the uh, visual pat down. Does she sure. look like she's being legit? Like she's got like sacred serenital like birkins and stuff on her? Can yeah, she can inside her. Sure. Oh, uh, your perception bark. Yeah, she she has all of the serenital paraphernalia. The garb that is a mixture of sort of like um, greens and golds and everything else and uh um, you can stop there jason uncle jimmy yeah, no. I, I rolled a 24. yeah oh, you you yours was good yours was good um so yeah you you, you get the sense with your higher check professor bark that everything right. seems above the board uncle jimmy uh you're not sure i'm a sketchy yeah, one legit man i uh i'm surprised that they would be so nice to send someone out to us after they gave all that info. Can you believe that? They got some intel they just found and they came directly to us first. Look at that, we're already making waves through this place. Oh, dang. The drowned mine is really far away. Is there like a, did she imply that there was like a path all the way underground from Karnak to there? Uh, she didn't seem like she was sure. She just knows that it at one point was a alternative base, probably pre-Karnak that they used, and is wondering if there isn't some type of intel in there that may help you out if you were to try to uh, pursue yeah. Karnak afterwards. It was an informational path. Ah. Mm. It well, would help it but it is off the beaten path. That is true. That's the why she's like, hey, it's up to you, but here's the info. It would be foolish to rush into a hunt without knowledge of our prey. Perhaps mm -hmm. we should take a detour. Yeah, I'm worried about it being labeled the headquarters. I'd take any advantage I can. I agree. Uh, agreed. To the mind. Knowledge. Well, no, knowledge is the best weapon. It's power, some say. Yeah, well, what's the, uh, what's the worst could happen? We have a good track record with, uh, it's Curse now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nothing's happened to us when we've gone to underground. God damn it! It's still <laughs> it's still <laughs> water. Don't worry, guys. What's the worst What's that the could? Worst no, that God damn it! Right. <laughs> you hear Bark's voice actually change. What he's saying? 
Well, yeah, let's uh, let's start heading that way then, unless anybody's got any objections. To the drum, it sounds safe. And it's really it's really not that far away because we can fast travel back to the guild and oh, cut out. True. Yeah. What was the recharge time on that? There is no recharge time. We just hit it. We go there and we'll save ourselves three three spots worth of travel. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not like mid combat or anything, as long as you all gather around the wagon nearby and focus using the harmonic emitter to trigger the ritual, it takes you back instant. Oh, go. Let's go. Let's go. Clever use of game mechanics. All right. Uh, you all continue on deciding to shift gears and begin heading this way. Uh, that's going to be two more hours. So that's the second move you make, putting you at five blight time. Uh, ping me. Nothing like happens. Now we're just traveling alongside them. Oh, I was going this way the, the whole time. Of course. All right. Another point off the harmonic flux as you reach the third pace before you need a rest. You're at seven light time. Uh, one more, please. Or I guess another one. Ping me. No, I. This one, okay. Brings you to nine light time. Got one more space to move. Uh, here you come across a interesting looking, almost pearlescent mushroom. Sticks out of the ground. Uh, pushing Ooh. through a small patch of dirt that sort of sticks up on a small hill out of the mud and stuff like that. Fine. Lead me, lend me an ear. I help me make a nature check. I would absolutely assist you. Very well. I imagine you have some expertise with these mushrooms. Oh shit, it's a crit. I've oh. seen them before. Is this trip die or tasty? <laughs> or a um, combination. <laughs> Professor Bark, you you've, you've seen these death? before, maybe more in your college years than anything else. This is the Seductus Lactimus, or the Lust Shroom. It is oh. a uh, almost golden luminescent mushroom that has, as you step up to its silver spots, ingesting the mushroom makes the creature who ate it hallucinate, making anything they see appear as a mushroom. Additionally, the creature has an unusually intense desire to consume all other mushrooms in sight, which puts them into an uncontrollable rage. Ah, well, could be useful. This could be a spot of fun. Shall I collect it then? Yes, let's hold on. Carefully. Uh, Lincoln will help because he doesn't need to breathe, so spores aren't a concern for him. Sure, sure. Yeah, you easily come over and sort of softly pull it from the ground, uprooting it, and uh, store it into the wagon. Yeah, put it in this little plastic baggie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and we'll keep yeah. the spores in. I don't know what everyone's laughing about. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln helps. Do we need to do a roll, or do we just collect the mushrooms? No, you're you're fine. It's it's one okay. singular sort of like fat mushroom. You able to just kind of grab and oh, keep going. Oh, cool. All right. We got a lustrum, baby. All right. Ping me. You got one more space before you technically need to rest, although you could push to get to the uh, drowned mines if you'd like to. Uh, moving another space, you find yourselves one step closer. Oh. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm moving this to the front. There we go. <laughs> you went under, though. You guys. really went down into the mines. We just <laughs> fell into them. <laughs> it's a trap! Uh, another point off the harmonic flux as you get to 11 uh, light time you can kind of see some of the Gledalkin up above slowly beginning to disperse as you're reaching the light's end uh, you find yourselves moving five spaces this would technically be the point at which you would need to rest uh, for whatever's left of the day before pressing on or you can push it to try to get to the drowned mines it's up to you I do you think we could use the advantage of night cover on a location we know little about? Might be occupied still, as the uh, Saruna the lady said. We could probably push it. 
Ah, who push it? Let's push it real good. <laughs> we do the thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me see here. Let me actually use my link to pull up the rules. Oh, no. How did I create this game? How did I? <laughs> what are my own rules for this game that I've done? Who? Who is this faction at Karnak? Blightners. Like Blightners. Blightners. Uh, for each additional hour, so this is two additional hours, you all need to make a DC 10 con save. So DC is 12 because this is two additional hours to be able to get there. Um, from each of you, anybody who fails takes a point of exhaustion. Right. Plus one roll. Uh, I'm gonna I use my advantage. Early. I was gonna I say, that. don't forget your inspiration cards. I was yeah. gonna say before we even roll, can we make this a better roll for everyone somehow? How would we uh, do that? The ability well, that we can bless. Obi rolled. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would pray. <laughs> like, do very well. If it counts, I could bless some people and pray. Like as we travel through the night, let's go safely. I'm rather hardy. I can bo for I can forego the bless if it helps others. Just I, I just would need a ruling. Yeah. Opie's head is like bobbing up and down. He's tired from all the trekking around. He's tired, baby. Lincoln, Ooh. fine. Ooh, give me yeah, that I'll, good I'll boy use my card. Ugh, I don't yeah. want to burn it right now. Uh, good boy card. Get grab what one of those. Was... Uh, exhaustion is skill checks. The first level of exhaustion. Yeah, is, is disadvantage, disadvantage on ability checks. Disadvantage on ability checks. Or uh, yeah, skill checks. Oh, so initiative too. Mm. Yeah, I don't uh, think I want to deal with that. It's not gonna help. Uncle Jimmy, feeling a little tired with one point of exhaustion. Keep that in mind. Now piss. Professor Bark feeling a little tired with one point at disadvantage. Why don't you all simply not sleep like me? What's wrong with you? One point of exhaustion. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't risk exhaustion. I hate giving up this good card though. I was gonna say we should have just stayed at the helper's hand guild and then one more day and then gone back and we wouldn't have had to. Ah. Tyne, you're fine. Go ahead and grab a good boy card. Saves. And, and Forte, you're like fine. That, we've wiped out all of our inspiration, all of inspiration. and most of us are exhausted. <laughs> uh, but you do reach the mines. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> As you reach the mine, you see what appears to be a relatively unmarked area that is a large sort of open hole that stretches out probably 15 or so feet. It's built up and out on a mound of uh, ground that pushes up past the muck and mire nearby. There are two torches on the sides that are actually uh, put up here. And you do see what looks to be, it's mostly covered in mud and dirt now, but there almost looks like at one point there was stone steps leading up to this place. Although it's, they seem very aged now and sort of like out of place. Um, and the two torches at the sides there are these torch sticks that stick up out of the ground neither of them are lit and one of them is actually sort of like bending uh tipping to the side perhaps signs or the lack there of signs of habitation habitation let me have a closer look at disadvantage <laughs> i was i was gonna check out yeah check out the torch see if it's been lit lately Sure, make a check. And that's not bad. That's not too not terrible. Are you looking for anything specific? Um, signs that anybody has been through these parts recently. Sure, sure. Um, with your check, Professor Bark, you get the sense that uh, there has been movement in and out. You can see the markings on the ground, but you can't make out if it is uh, humanoid or something else, unsure. But certainly there has been some movement as you can kind of see the trail in and out slightly disturbed. And then tying with your check, you get the sense that these torches have likely not been lit in um, several days, maybe even weeks.
Well then, either they can see in the dark and we're fucked, or there's no one here. At the very least, we may found information. We should continue. That, I mean, did I find anything with my perception? I got 22. Yeah, that's the, you're talking about the torches. The torches haven't been lit yeah. in several days, uh, maybe even so, weeks. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps we should still move cautiously, but there may be no one here. Here, here. Well then, stealthy away. Uh, you guys... You guys were doing perception checks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to, we were done with that. We we yeah. did the torch thing. I think we found no, this one. Fine. I was going to ask if I could do a uh, survival check. Um, I, maybe it would be investigation. I just wanted to search, like, before we head in there, the grounds a little bit to see if I could find any tracks of any other creatures or monsters or something. I mean, if the torches aren't lit, maybe something else is crawling yeah, around. Yeah, there was something moving in and out of yeah, the cave. Yeah, that, that was Professor Bart, Bark's check. You can make a check on your own, but yeah, Professor Bark gained some information. Would survival or uh, investigation, what do you prefer? Uh, I'll take either. I can assist on survival if that helps. Also, I crit my save. With your assist, that would make it a regular roll for me, so... Yeah. Eighteen. Uh, yep, you find the same information that Bark found. Uh, it looks disturbed here, likely some type of thing moving in and out. Uh, but the tracks, because of sort of the muddy, more damp nature of this area, makes it hard to, to point out if this is more humanoid or something else. You, you're not sure. Uh, to be safe before we go in there, let's, uh, let's try to keep the cart a little bit further back and maybe try to camouflage it. I mean, it's a giant plant. We could put some some shrubs or something on it i feel like every time we get into fighting something the cart's so close by that even if we go on the mine i don't want uh, nothing sneaking up on it you know Billy up the cart um opie's gonna leave his hamsters in their cage in the cart mm-hmm mm-hmm wise we'll want food later <laughs> <laughs> These are not food. Who eats space hamsters? I don't know. I don't eat. They weren't terrible. Professor! Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if we need checks from anybody to do the, uh, to can't sort of camouflage the wagon like Jimmy well, was Well, that, that was going to be my question. Are, are you guys actually, what are you doing if you're trying to camouflage the car? I just park it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Park it a little bit further back, and if, uh, without trying to make too much noise, just get some loose foliage or something and kind of toss it over the top. Park it next to a, a tree and some bushes or something. Okay. Give me a... Uh... take a survival? I was, yeah, I was going to say, survival check would be that, the one. I can assist somebody with survival. Oh, Opie got a dirty 20. Nope. All right. Um... Tyne, you you help smatter Try. some some mud on it. Uh, <laughs> time time picks up like one leaf. <laughs> uh, yeah, with Opie, you kind of like stand on top of the cart, being a little more mobile and smaller, and kind of direct the others to cover it up as best as possible. As you kind of pop back down and take a step back, looks like a big old bush. And despite the fact that it is a large wagon carried by a draft animal. <laughs> <laughs> the draft animal is actually a plant creature itself, so it kind of blends in a little bit. And uh, you feel like you are all ready to move on. All right, let's go inside. Were we going to try to stealth it up? Or I know we're kind of tired. Does anyone have dark vision? 60. Oh, you should go first then. Lincoln will go behind you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mind if I uh, scoot up with you? I got dark vision also. Uh, fall in line and uh, stay behind the shield. Oh, didn't get a dirty 20, by the way. I have disadvantage. I'm exhausted. Sorry. Well, I, I took your first roll. It's still a 20. 
Well, no, but well, I, I rolled with I, disadvantage. I, so I, it's, it was actually a Kurt Frail. Well, yeah, yeah. He assisted. Oh, okay. So okay that's, I was just going off your first one. You're good. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. For, Forte is trained in survival. So. so each of you begin to enter into the cave. Is everyone making a stealth check to be stealthy? Is that what you're all doing? Yeah, let's see. Right. Stealth yeah. check. Yes, I, Wait, I, I we, love to be stealthy. Before well, we let's... do, before we do, okay, okay. stop rolling. Don't roll. Pass without trace. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do the cool. thing. That's plus 10, right? It's plus yeah, 10, it's yes. It's good stuff. I don't quite understand how... Thank God. All right, so that's how chainmail makes so much clickety clanking, but it gives me a disadvantage. Seventeen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Twenty-three. All right, man. Pass without trace. Plus ten is pretty much just like you got to really it's fuck a, up. To, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a good, it's a good spell. Yeah, it's yeah, good. I don't have many spell slots, but it's a good use of one of them. Uh, that's yeah. a good one. You all begin to descend in the uh, open hole here that's sort of built out of the side of a uh, upturned hill area. And oh as you do, the air here grows a little colder, a little cooler. And you notice the sound of trickling nearby. And you can kind of look down and amongst the rocks and mud below you, you see a small running stream that begins to descend down and you continue to press on the relatively large open nature of the hole opening begins to narrow a bit it begins to, the hole in the bush begins to tighten up and uh as you to continue to descend um kevin we are, we are poisoning descending. us and as you continue on at first you hear sort of the soft sound of splashing below your feet with the trickling stream and as you continue on it picks up a little bit. You begin to hear a slosh as the water rises to two or three feet as you feel some of your boots and socks and stuff getting a little wet. And uh, it's, it's pitch black in here. So is anyone trying to provide a light source or are you just kind of continuing? I like to watch, so I'll uh, crack it if we need it. All right. I looked at everyone and put a finger up. Shh. You, you, you got an echo in here. Shh. We did it. Uh, um, yeah, I can enchant three, uh, three miscellaneous <laughs> things to have light on them. It's a, what you call it, class feature. Works oh. different from the light spell. My I, can... oh, I pull up a little ball of flame in my hand that produces 30 feet of light. Welcome to How... the cave. How high is the water? Um, about two and a half feet up. For us, like, chest level. <laughs> and... Okay, Opie's gonna put on his breathing bubble. Sure. Just in case. And as you all continue down, the narrow passage begins to open up into what appears to be a room, and I'm gonna move maps here. I'm not using dynamic lighting, so... Uh, this may be able to run a little bit gonna find yourselves down at the bottom left I believe correctly okay, there you go. Uh, the room opens up and you can actually see what looks like a man-made structure of some interior built from uh, stone and as you hear the sloshing of your feet up ahead you see a small set of grimy algae covered stairs that leads into a small alcove to the left up ahead of you you see what appears to be two different areas that continue on further, but the roofing has collapsed down some. And the only way to press on appears to be diving down as the waters uh, open up in those areas. I can scout ahead if need be. I do not need to breathe. I can come with you. I can be an octopus. 
Is this just like a little uh, like spillway? It's yeah, like it's a it's a spillway. Town. Yeah, you you see okay. like some oh. some removed uh, brick stones and water sort of pouring out. Okay. Yeah. I, I could join you if you need a third. If we're just scouting, perhaps we should keep the group small for the time being. Makes sense. Oh my god. Oh, gonna be a wolf spider. We can just creepy crawl all over the place. <laughs> nice. Um. Uh, Opie's going to throw four breadcrumbs into the water and four giant frogs pop up. What the fuck? It's my new spell. Yeah. From bread to frogs. Yeah. From oh. Bread to... Okay. It's what, it's what King Toad gave me. Yeah, that was her gift from King Toad. King? Yeah. yeah. So now he just has four giant frogs just like floating in the water. Following uh, him, size. frog army. Oh yeah, giant yeah, frog medium. Meat. Okay. Yeah. Before we dive in to the spooky tunnel, though, I want to know what's up with this skeleton over here. Mm. Sure, sure. I'm gonna go look at him. Do you need light? Oh, you have light, right? Crawling yeah, on you... the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I've got light. My blade is enchanted to give light from Bark's thing that he has. Yeah. Give light from Bark's thing. Gotcha. Yeah. For the whole. Uh, you see what appears to be a skeleton who um, leans up against the wall. Their bones sort of covered in light flecks of algae and their skull sort of leans to the side. Um, that's what you see without any check. Uh, Investigation? Sure. I don't know if I have anything better than that. I don't think I do. Investigation plus zero. 14. Not too bad. Uh, hang on just a second, Joker. We'll do that in a second. Uh, with your investigation check, you are able to study the body on the arms and legs of the body you find that it appears as though the bones themselves uh, seem to have been punctured by something small and almost needle-like you can see the indentions of something in the the bone work like something bit it really hard would that check uh, probably a, a decent hypothesis yes yeah I, I tell the rest of the party that before we go down into the water, and I suggest that I've changed my mind, and Tyne should probably come with us. I was going to say, I can, uh, did you, Bark, did you want to check out the teeth imprint with me? Uh, sure, I can help you. What matter of creature is that? And then as you're checking it, um, Joke has redeemed the elated or forlorn condition. So somebody give me a d6 roll, and I'm just going to go by your pictures here on the stream. Lock record. D6, 6. Uh, 1, Real 2, easy. 3, 4, 5, 6. Uncle Jimmy, now I need a d2. 1 is elated, 2 is forlorn. I'll let you roll that, Jimmy. You are ah. elated, Uncle Jimmy. Nice. Ah. Hit that Thank and make it Time. Um, yeah. Animal handling wouldn't be good for that. I, I guess probably nature. Yeah. Uh, Give me a I d6 roll, somebody. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> right, that does something, doesn't it? Uh, Let Six. me see here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, give me another roll. That was that was Uncle Jimmy again. Oh yeah. Four. Sorry. One, two, three, four. Kyle, give me a D two. One elated, oh. two forlorn. Will we get another one. Yep. No. Professor Bark. Unlike the giddy nature of Uncle Jimmy in this space, you unfortunately find yourselves uh, becoming a little depressed from the exhaustive state of uh, seeing your teammates and traveling through the area. You are forlorn. I'm angry. 
Uncle Jimmy's gonna go to walk over to Bark and pat him on the back. And why don't you uh, let me go up there and you uh, keep an eye on the kid over here. But I wanted to go. Uh, Tyne, you are making a nature check on the uh... the teeth marks. Okay. Uh, Let's with a twenty, how what made them? Yeah. With a twenty-two, you study it. You see most of them coming from around like the feet and waist. And using your nature check, you get the sense that this was looking and studying the area. This was probably some type of carnivorous uh, aquatic creature. Uh oh. Okay. So scouting suddenly seems like not the best idea. Yeah, it seems do, really dangerous. Do we have people that have other ways of breathing underwater? Like, anybody have, like, water breathing as a spell for the people that can't breathe underwater normally? I mean, Opie can breathe underwater only because of his breathing bubble. Opie has a little yeah. breathing bubble. Forte and Jim, I think we have to worry about. Hey, uh, this, uh, this might be a little far-fetched, but, uh, if something's in here, and we're all a little, uh, beat up, we might be able to take a, uh, He's gonna point back over where that skeleton was. We might be able to take a quick uh, little nap over here for a bit, rest up. Well, we're not beat up, but yeah, we're tired. We'd be we'd be fine in a fight with just one level of exhaustion, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. not gonna affect us in a fight. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Listen. Maybe. Maybe maybe the three of us that can breathe underwater, or however many, should just go and see how far underwater it is, to, just to see if, you know, we, we need a way for people to breathe, or if yeah. they can just swim. So, I've got an interesting thing that I could do. It's not swimming. I could meld with stone, basically walk through the cave underwater like Metal <laughs> Mario. That's pretty dope. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Metal Mario. That counts, but I gotta physically be inside like the bedrock the whole time. Oh yeah. Let's Otherwise, let's uh, let, let's. Up, I'm I'm pretty much sunk on the bottom. I don't oh, know no. what swimming in plate is like, but not good. <laughs> I would say there is no swimming in plate. <laughs> okay. You could probably uh, do it. It'd just be very difficult. Let, let's send our aquatic strike team in just to see how long it's gonna take. All right. Yeah. So who's the aquatic right, strike yeah. team? Lincoln. Myself. Opie. Opie and four frogs. Opie and the frogs. Frog. <laughs> uh, pulling up my, my monster sheet. So give me a second. Uh, Lincoln, yeah. you uh, look forward assessing. It appears as though there are two pathways uh, that you could potentially take. Oh, they're both flooded completely. Like yep. it would require you to go underwater. Yeah, the the area opens up, and at the base of your feet, you see it begin to descend quickly at both of these pathways. Uh, but the walls here have caved in in such a way that you would have to submerge yourself underwater to press on. It's about ten. It's about uh, ten feet of water that you. Let's go. Ten foot depth. Left to right, though. Uh. Mm. Arbitrary choice left. I mean, can we do some kind of perception check and just see which way might? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Which way might not have? Be my guest, exhausted people. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm not exhausted. Thirteen. Um, bad. Opie, you take a second to look at both. You're not able to. You know, oh my god, cat butt. You're not able to perceive <laughs> much because the waters are pretty dark here and just the general dark nature. But you do get the sense that the left path is uh, continues straight on, whereas the right path begins to curl and uh, probably uh, move you in a curled direction, either heading uh, due uh, right or maybe even curling fully around. You're not sure. I say we do the curl. Right. The curl it is. 
All, All right. right, let's go. Heading under the waters. Y'all go ahead. I can't do swim speed yet. Oh. Wah, wah. Wah, bah, bah. Opie, you I slip on your out. breathable bubble helmet and push underneath the water. You can hear the splash and kick of the frogs behind you as they begin to follow, which you have control over. And then Lincoln, you just literally just keep walking. You, you do that thing yeah, like yeah. the cool thing you do as a kid where you just keep walking as you go underwater. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I have a, I, I do have a swim speed, but oh, okay, cool. yeah, that's way, that's way cooler. Uh, yeah, you continue walking here, Lincoln, as you push in, um, throwing a hand up against the wall here under the water is kind of walking on its surface. You see, as Opie saw with a perception check, it does begin to curl around. All right. Try and I'm zoom out back. here. Channel. As you moving forward. move over here, you're able to see that it opens up now into what looks like a slightly more open space as it curls. Oh, is it, and it's all still underwater. I don't see any like all still. Of air. You'll you'll notice. Um, well, a little less with time here. You'll notice the deeper waters where you have to go underwater are a darker color than the uh, ones that you entered in. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, but yeah, gonna, yeah, they're still deep, all underwater. I'm going to move to here and look down the path. As you look down the path here, uh, Lincoln, you see underneath the waters here a 10-foot high set of what look like stone doors that appear locked. Huh. Okay. There's like a, a padlock on them. Oh, there's straight-up padlock. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and Jimmy can't breathe underwater, so we can't thieves tool it. Can I, can I, can I just attack the padlock just to see if maybe it's rusted or weak enough to? Yeah, to break? sure, sure. I, you know that I, you know, like the other members here, Lincoln, are obviously mortal in that they have to breathe, but this isn't too far in, um, so maybe. Uh, there's I'm a shark, business. by the way. Oh, okay. cool. Uh, Tyne uh, swims behind you if he is a shark. I'll, I'll attack the, the block. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's nine. Uh, you roll, strike. Roll the two. Classic you Luke. You strike hard with your rapier, but the waters make things a little more awkward and difficult, Lincoln, as you do strike. And unfortunately, as you kind of hit the lock, it, it does connect. But doesn't do much outside of that. You see the you now see as it sort of glints in the light given off by Tyne. Is this a torch Tyne or are you do you have the light spell on you? Oh actually you know what? When I transformed I probably lost that. So let's just I, take it. Okay. I have Bark's light yeah, on my rapier light. right oh, now. Okay, okay. So yeah, your rapier is the thing that's lighting up the area. The lock glints and you get the sense that yeah, this is like a steel uh lock on the doors and it's gonna take a little more than that to kind of break through it. Okay. Or well, to out. pry through it, you know, your way. Well, out, 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 everybody. Let's let's go back to our friends. Uh, after about I... a minute or two, you, uh, Uncle Jimmy, Professor Bark, and Forte, see Lincoln just kind of like walking through the water. It, it would be incredibly terrifying if you didn't know him. <laughs> as you see the antlers begin to, uh, you know, rise out of the waters as this just deer-faced uh, antler skull begins to protrude. <laughs> Mm, there is a locked door. Jimmy, if you could hold your breath, perhaps we could unlock it. Or we could continue down the left path. Yeah, I could do that. Just don't hold yours, eh? Hey, uh, 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 ah, humor. I have dark vision and I'm gonna wade in as far as I can and take a deep breath and see if I can pick the lock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Want me to just go over there? Oh, yeah, get in there, my friend. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. uh, taking a deep breath, kind of put one of your furry paws against the collapsed wall and just kind of push yourself under, and you begin swimming through the waters. Uh, you make it over to the locked door, able to see the lock that is keeping it closed. Opie, you see behind you in the little air bubble. It's kind of staring at you. That's a sleight of hand, correct? 
Uh, yeah, a uh, sleight of hand. And while he's in the water, Opie's warm is a bunch of little tadpoles. <laughs> Disadvantage, that's a 13. Oh, and uh, elated. You are elated! And that's a 1, so that's 14. <laughs> Add a one. Right. Add a plus yeah, one. Yeah, I was gonna say if it needs a plus one, I have uh, three banked at the moment. Well, we don't know if it needs one, so. So I'll just add one. Fifteen. Fifteen. 15 14. Uh, very nice. Uh, you begin working the lock on the door, Uncle Jimmy. Thank you so much for all those subs. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you and welcome. Happy to have you. Um, Uncle Jimmy, you holding your breath, begin to pull your tools out and just pulling them out of the uh, unraveled. Uh, thieves kit begin working at the lock with a 15 as you continue to work at it uh, sure. you hear a muffled pop and you see the lock come undone I'm going to uh, just so I can get my breath swim back over to Lincoln and the crew and uh, give him the thumbs up good good Looks like we are good to continue then. Yep. Is it safe on the other side of the door? Do we have some to breathe? I'm going to look. Uh, Tying, now that the lock is gone, you just sort of use your reef shark body to push into the stone doors using your uh, your cartilage nose and, and push it open. It opens to a narrow path that up ahead you can see the waters uh, begin to ascend or the, the the ground floor here 10 feet down in the depths ascends up and the collapsed flooring gives way to an area where everyone could uh, make it out of the waters a little further ahead. oh cool Lincoln can you make sound underwater well, that's a good question I don't know how I make sound normally <laughs> I I don't know I'll leave that one up to Jason I, I have no idea um I, I would say it functions like uh, maybe there's no air bubbles, but it is a muffled sound just like anybody else trying to talk underwater. Trick and dagger over your rib cage. I could. Subnautical noises. Know, I was going to telepathically link, mind link with somebody, but maybe maybe Opie, because Opie has the bubbles, so it can, he can speak normally, I guess, right? Yeah, it's just an air bubble, so I'd say he can speak. Yeah, you hear Opie. Uh, kind of say something out loud and it is slightly muffled because you yourself are underwater but comes through much clearer than just someone trying to talk underwater that's okay. almost intelligible or right well, I, I hope you feel like a tap in your mind like someone knocking on a door um you understand uh, hopefully you want remember that it's me i'm trying to mind link with you you have to accept it oh yeah knock knock yeah. <laughs> yep and I, I just tell you that uh, the the way forward seems clear so far. If you want to let the others know. Um, yeah, Opie's gonna make sure to tell everybody that we're going forward. Um, I don't know if everybody wants to come with. It looks like there's a place for us to stand down in the south. So. Oh yeah. Uh, it's not too long. Like, I think people could probably hold their breath the whole way. Yeah, yeah. You guys could pass yeah. through with relative ease. Can, Opie, Opie can I tell everybody? Can I mechanically do this, or do I have to take my chain mail and store it? You just walk on the water. Can, yeah, I, I, I'd I say it's like. Do that or? Yeah, yeah. It, your, your, your armor's heavy. I'm not going to say, like, you can't swim, but yeah, it's certainly. A little more awkward in all the weight that you carry with you in your armor. You 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 do that thing where like you kind of you moonwalk, where you can kind of press off the 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 bottom of the waters yeah. and kind of bounce really high, but you eventually do get pulled back down. But it looks like the way up ahead is is not too far. And as you kind of push through here, Tyne, uh, the waters do the same thing where they sort of uh, begin to drop down as you continue to ascend, so that it's only about three or four feet high of water. It is, I, I, again, talk back to Opie in his mind, tell him it's clear up here. All right. Let's go. 
Um, you see up ahead a narrow path that cuts to the left, and then a open way or room with a pillar in the center further down. Perhaps we should let our armored compatriot take the lead once more. Because this is shallow enough for him to stand in, right? Yeah, all of this is shallow oh, here. The shallow here? Oh, okay. Shield wall. Yeah, no it, Tyne, if you're still in your reef shark, you're sort of like uh, half submerged. You're still able to kind of push through, but yeah, you're kind of like a, a shark in a bathtub. <laughs> Tyne, <Tyner, Tyner. laughs> I'm, I'm back as Tyne. Okay. All right. See a little bit up ahead there. Bonk. Uh, you see here the waters um, continue on and get deep to the left. It's uh, a little bit of a, a dive that way, and I see uh, it, it might be a pillar ahead. I can't quite make it out. Let's see what's around the corner here. Okay, shield up and uh, peek around the corner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I did not see anything. Oh, there I go. Okay. It is uh, a room, a big, big room. We can uh, just all get nice and cozy in here. It's it's not a big room. Um, there's a there's a door ahead, and uh, I don't know what's to the uh, the south. Uh, it, it appears as though there's another locked door up north. Whenever the link, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say another locked door. Whenever Lincoln gets a chance, he wants to sneak around up here in the water. Sure. Uh, you doing like a stealth check to do that? Yeah, Thank yeah, you. I'll do a stealth check. Okay. I still got past without Trace going, so. Oh, uh, yeah. 36. Get some use out of that. Uh, let's see here. You press forward, and as you step there, Lincoln, you see this path continues on and sort of kicking around in the waters that hasn't seen you yet because of your incredibly high check. You see what looks to be a small school of what look like uh, piranha-like fish. Yeah, those are piranhas. Nice. Uh, I'll, I'll retreat back to the rest of the group, tell them there's piranhas that way, but we have potentially another way to go if we can't get through this door up here. Uncle Jimmy, if you uh, could be so kind to uh, apply your expertise. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Jimmy's going to take a uh, investigation or perception check, whichever you prefer, to uh, check it for traps. Sure. I don't know if that to the south runs out or... Uh, no, sorry. Drop. That's that's just oh, a, okay. another sort of like uh, area yeah. where you see water kind of spilling out of the wall. Got it. That's a uh, 13 at disadvantage. Uh, 13, Uncle Jimmy, uh, it looks like another sort of steel padlock on here, but outside of that, doesn't seem like there's anything stopping you from being able to press on. All right. Other, than, other than the lock itself, I mean. Try and pick it. Sure. Oh, that's fantastic. That's a big old 11 with a disadvantage. Uncle Jimmy, you take some time using your thieving tools. Um... But as you sort of take some deep breaths in, slightly belabored from the journey to get here, uh, your focus is just a little bit off and you're not able to pick this lock. Could I uh, try and force it? Uh, with a strength athletics check, sure. No, I, I meant uh, try and force it with a pick, but uh, not athletics, I wouldn't be able to break it. What about Forte? He's strong. I just look I, back and shrug. I could try to give it uh, what we like to call uh, percussive maintenance. See if I can uh, <laughs> repair the padlock uh, the way it needs to be repaired. I'm going to pull out my hand crossbow and point it behind him if anything comes out ready to fire. Okay. So, would that be an attack roll? Um, or would that be a? I'd say like a, give me a strength athletics check. Let's try that. Like you, athletics. Yeah, you're okay. trying to like pr almost pry it off or smash it off instead of just you know doing. It. All right, kind of. Sh right, athletics. It's a sixteen. Okay. okay, with a sixteen, 
are you using your uh what is it starfall what is it called uh yeah starfall would be the the plus one more hammer uh you grip it in your hands and sling back and smash into the lock uh this one much easier to deal with since it's not underwater and everyone watches as it smashes uh the bottom half of it uh, is pulled hard from the loop that keeps the do doors uh, shut tight and you hear the clanging of some metal as it is uh, broken in half and falls to the floor. Uh, mighty craft. This thing will come in handy. Excellent. Um, shield up and I'll kind of breach and clear, kick the door down. Or are we doing right. this quiet? Are we? Well, I mean, I just bashed it in. It probably can't be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> True. Let's, just let's just open the door and see what happens. <laughs> fall, fall in, go. And just shields up, and he's Forte is going to kick the door. Uh, breach and clear. You kick the door open. Um, and as you do, skittering around is a creature that comes right at you. I need everyone oh. to please roll me initiative. Oh god, it's oh they're horrifying. It's what appears to be creatures. a collection of severed hands oh, just crawl across oh, the floor, why? gripping why? and grabbing towards you. Why? Jason played too much freaking Elden Ring, those hand locks. Oh. I told you this oh, this was this is inspired oh, by Elden well, Ring. I'll i I'll see you guys see you guys later. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go switch my laundry. Oh, yeah, let's nice. pull this up. I crawled into a giant wet hole and found a bunch of hands, man. How do you guys <laughs> Down in a hole. Um, um, all my ahead. frogs have their own initiative, Jason. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, um, God. You gave them the they spawned with some cool names. I love yeah, the names. Oh, my God, you Look named the names. them. <laughs> awesome. Um, love it. Thematically, when I kicked the door down, I would have stepped through, so I believe I'm allowed or supposed to be in the position I'm at. Oh yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you you step through okay. there as that happened. Okay, I'm right back while we get combat set. And then let's add Uncle Jimmy. Add time. Oh, two man. <laughs> Things are that you got facing against. Right. Add bark. Add bark. Add bark. Add bark. Add, bark. add Professor Bark. I'm gonna go after Lincoln, so I'm gonna put in four. And I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grabby hand water. Sounds like it drown multiple people. Oh man. Scary thought. Scary thought. There's not even anything in this room. It's just hands. It's simply <laughs> everywhere are hands hole in the bush how big are these piranhas oh they look oh, how... they look uh like they're probably piranha uh, sized like normal piranha size like they're tiny fish size. okay um and then give me just a second here let me just pull up the can opie Opie has a fishing, like fishing tackle and stuff that includes like a net. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> He's not gonna go fishing for the prize. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> fighting and Opie's over here. I'm gonna get him, guys! <laughs> I just like, I want some way to like block off this area. Well, they're not gonna come for They us. can't they come up into the, the shallow water. Well, they if might be able to. Tiny, they can. Because it's like it's like two and a half feet of water still, right? It would be enough for them to to get up there. Um, yeah. Oh, good point. Better sacrifice Blinky. <laughs> oh boy, they are going. Whoops. They are going last. His martyrdom will not be in vain. Yeah, I'll just have one of the frogs stand there. He um, was bread. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. instead of 
instead of up here in the corner, can I say that the frogs were just like following me in a line? Yeah, that's fine. Like this. You can cheat like. Is that cheating? <laughs> I had open their little corner for me. Uh. All right, uh, turn order is ready. Blinky up first. What's Blinky doing? Oh my god, Blinky the frog is first. Yeah, uh -huh. Blinky. Get him. Look at all the 13s. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, Blinky. The ballad of Blinky. Blinky's going to be the guard for the piranhas, I think. And he is just going to sit there. All right. Why do you have this like court, like this choir Elden Ring music on? I told you, it's all this entire campaign is Elden Ring. Oh, is it for real? Yeah, that makes sense. Today I learned. Actually, uh, Blinky, Blinky's gonna go right there. Okay, That's poor it. Blinky. Uh, <laughs> you're like swim, Blinky. Just go a little further. Okay, you freaked me out. He's gonna go right there. <laughs> Uh, all right, Blinky swims a little ahead of you. Opie, that means you're up. Um, ooh, these tight quarters. There's no boy. Bueno. If if Opie goes, well, Opie's gonna go right here. If Opie's right here, can we say that he can like see Forte? Yeah, yeah, you can see the the doors are open. You can see Forte. Forte did like a like a kick open of the doors. Yeah, you, you can see past the doors. Okay. Um. Opie's just going to sit there for now. I think. Let me make sure. Ooh. Actually. Opie is going to cast fairy fire into this room. Mm. Okay. So that is a 20 foot cube. So Draw that for me. I'd say the, the farthest site you could probably get is like right here. So you could probably make that the left edge if you wanted to. All right. Where? Uh, about right Can here. Okay, so... Oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's I didn't know it was free hand. <laughs> How do you do a just a okay, never mind. Somebody else draw it or what are you trying to do? Scary fire with my strong hand. <laughs> How do you do like a rectangle? Um draw rectangle shape. tool. Yeah, there's draw shape instead of freehand. Yeah. That's what I selected. Uh oh. Uh, okay. Well, know. must not. Selected harder. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing. Ah. All right. Yes, he casts fairy fire. I assume he gets everything. Uh, yeah. If it's twenty foot, that's gonna that's gonna hit all these uh, boiks in here. All right. They are all outlined. Well, do they need to make uh, deck saves? Yes. I believe they do. 13. Yes. 13. Alright. Deck saves coming up. DC 13. Uh, the one near Forte fails. The one at the far right wall makes it. The one at the behind the others, the far north, uh, fails as well. So both of these are marked in the fairy fire. Are you going to put little icons on them? I, I will. So we can remember. Alright, cool. Uh, you have advantage against the attacks for those. All right. Good stuff. Anything else, Opie? That's it. All right. It's Clyde. <laughs> uh, Clyde's up next. Um. Man, my PC hates being in this room with revealed uh, areas. Is anybody else getting some mass PC usage out of this stuff? Yeah. My CPU is like going insane. That's weird. Uh, I've got my uh, Google Chrome is up to four gigs of memory. Being yeah. Used the yeah. I tried closing everything else out. Um, Clyde goes right there and that's it. 
Are you having the same thing, uh, Uncle Jimmy? All right, uh, yeah. I go there. And fucking roll twenty. Yikes, guys. Uh, all right. Boundary. Yeah, yeah. DM Hub. I was looking at that today. That thing is so sick. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh god. It that fucking blows cool. this out of the water. No offense, roll twenty. I love being an ambassador. I love you. I love you. Guys, D and D Beyond is. Uh, <laughs> do we really want to anymore? Do we really want to do that? <laughs> It's no, now, it, now it's now it's sincere, so we shouldn't do it anymore. D and D like won't exist in like a year, so it's fine. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, Uncle Jimmy up next. Uncle uh, Jimmy's gonna at twenty feet. Uh, twenty feet. He's gonna move uh, twenty feet and try and find a path. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, take a shot at this nasty, slimy mess of hands. Sure thing. We have advantage, yes? Uh, that one is an advantage, yeah. It's got the little tick on it. It is covered in Opie's fairy fire. It's a uh, 24. Totally hits. Is that with advantage? You should roll again. Yeah, That's with advantage. Oh. Okay. Exhaustion doesn't work on, doesn't do yeah. attack rolls. It's just skill rolls. Yeah, you're only no, on level that's... one exhaustion, so. Oh, yeah, that was a... Oh, I see it. Keep highest one. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. I missed that too. That's that's what cage. It, it rolls differently on yours from everybody else's. So that's uh, 17 damage from my regular attack, and since I'm a bugbear and that hand hasn't done anything yet, that's a 10 extra for 27 total. Uh, what does it look like when you take care of this uh, grabbing mound of hands? Like a really weird cartoon. He just takes a shot, and all the hands turn and get stacked with one arrow. <laughs> like a big old hand sandwich. <laughs> Good stuff. Anything else, Uncle Jimmy? Uh... Take a couple more feet to uh, get back in the hall. Now nah, you guys are coming through. I'm okay. I'll uh, bonus action take one more shot, and then I'll take a shot at one of these guys over here. Sure. Let's see, it's another twenty-four. That'll that'll hit. <laughs> that'll hit. Were you aiming at the top one or bottom one? Top one, you get a damage. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sadly, that is only... What the hell is it? What piercing. the hell? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's 10 piercing. Okay. It had added the sneak attack. That's what it came up with on that Gotcha. Yeah, 10 piercing damage to the one on top. Uh, you strike the mound of what look like just hands that uh, as the shot takes... Old, you see them sort of scatter around and another mound of them that has peeled off from the main one begins to form oh, oh I see that's like. it okay Inky <laughs> <laughs> I love oh yes our classic squad mate Inky oh Linky Inky. Inky moves there, and that's it for Inky. Oh, Linky, time! Alright. Time will go ahead and move up into the room. Back here. Open his hand and throw a little ball of flame at... A fireball. One of the... Oh, goodness, there's two. Uh... The top hand. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ha! 17 either way. Uh, that'll hit. 10 fire damage. Uh, and that, is that to just the top one? Yes. All right. Uh, what does it look like as you sizzle this one with your blast of fire? It just immolates and like it actually kind of looks like a, a spider i'm assuming and just kind of crawls up and fingers twitch it is taken care of and downed anything else time 
Um, I'll bonus action cast Shillelagh on my staff. Mm -hmm, Just in mm -hmm. case. Shillelagh. And that's it. All right, good stuff. That means these creatures up next, uh, they've heard the commotion and go to investigate, and there is a delicious-looking creature ahead of them. It's no. Swim up and attempt to take a bite. Eating bread. Blinker. Not Blinky. Uh, tries to bite. Uh, tries to bite Blinky. That's gonna be uh, 16 versus Blinky's AC. Oh yeah. They bite him for one piercing damage. Oof. Oh no. That's not much. Well, I survived. Uh, Blinky is, uh, he's still doing all right. Thank goodness. Hey, goodness. A hearty <laughs> piece of bread. Uh, hang on, I take that back. This was, this was, uh, uh quite a few of them. I take that back. Yeah, hang on, just, hang on just a second. That's not just like one. That, that's that's a swarm of them. Hang on. School of piranha. Yeah, my bad. Uh, it deals again. one damage per piranha, and there are thirty-seven of them. <laughs> uh, they swarm Blinky, and he takes sixteen points of piercing damage no. instead. <laughs> oh, Blinky's not looking so good, y'all. No. Uh, they Did swim he up. Know? He's live, but he's so holy shit. <laughs> yeah, what a Chad. I mean, that's better than. We could have hoped for, honestly. Yeah. He has 18 hit points. Ooh. Opie, you can. Armor class is 11. You can hear the waters behind you in that narrow passageway beginning to kick up and around. And as you turn, you begin to see some of the waters uh, that pulls red. out of that deep passage. Yeah, grow red. Oh no. Sad days. Uh, let's see. They are done, which means, uh, Pinky up next. <laughs> Pinky's gonna come up here to try to assist uh, Blinky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brother. Can like I forget the I forget the D and D rules here. Can he like go into the same space to like make an attack? <sighs> I I think you just can't end there. I think the idea is that you can pass through ally spaces, but you can't stop on one. So with that idea, you could move through that space, but you couldn't stop on the same exact space and then make an attack roll. He's a he's a giant frog, right? Yeah. Medium sized. So he's medium sized. Oh, I was looking to see if he had like a tongue attack or something that reached, but he doesn't. Oh, no. He doesn't, no. And he can't move through the piranhas, right? Yeah, he can't move through enemy spaces is the other thing. He can he can Ooh. prepare he can prepare an attack if the piranhas come next to him. What about okay. a jump? Like frog Ooh, splash he can, he over. Can jump. Can oh, he jump? He can, dodge action. <laughs> he can, can he jump. jump the the only issue is that the space here where the wall collapses, that area goes deep in the waters. So there's yeah. no real space to jump to. Ah. Okay, that's fine. He'll hold an action if the piranhas come up to him he'll okay. uh, attack <laughs> like a um, fucking conveyor belt line of uh, this wall yeah. behind you all oh my god what a terrible professor, thing professor burke would like you to move back a space so he can stand there i got a short range attack that i need to be in range of so, uh so you want him right here yeah please that'd be great okay right all right that's it uh moving back one good stuff uh pinky's done lankin you're up next Lincoln dives in, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 is Lincoln's new speed, uh, and I am going to attack this hand thing with my, my new rapier. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, it's a 22 to hit. Nice. Totally hits. That's going to deal 17... Damage, 13 of its piercing, 4 of its psychic. Was that top DPS. one? Yes. To the top one, yeah. Uh, you you eviscerate the mound of hands. And uh, second attack going at this fella here. 19 to hit. Hits. 14 damage. You eviscerate this mound of hands. Twice, slice. 
Meh. And that's all, folks. Well, Piranha. Eh, he's not going <laughs> anywhere. All right, uh, good stuff, Lincoln. Professor Bark. I'm testing a new potion. Would you mind trying it out for me, Mr. Piranhas? Uh, pa -pa -pa, poison spray. No more. There we go. Poison uh, depth charge. Makes a DC 14 constitution save. Uh, they make it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Sorry, bud. All right, a solid attempt, Professor Bark. You launch one of your vials into the waters and watch as the water uh, kind of mixes up with a greenish looking toxic uh, texture and color, but it doesn't look like the uh, fish are able to be caught in the diffusion of the green and the, the larger open depths that go down into that area, unfortunately. Back. Uh, Forte up next. Sounds like most of the trouble is taken care of in this room, seeing everything here, Forte, but you still hear the sound of kicking water from behind you, where you assume the swarm of those piranha-like fish are probably attacking someone. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm needed in here, right? You guys probably have that skeleton investigated and whatnot, so I'm going to move back out into the hall. I mean, we could also probably take care of the piranhas, to be honest. I want Blinky to eat them. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't be able to get further than that. And I don't have line of sight to blast it. Yeah, so I'd say technically it's not line of sight, unfortunately. I will hold a sacred flame should a hostile creature enter my sight radius. Sure. Uh, sounds good to me. Uh, those creatures are dead. Blinky's up next. Hey, Blinky wants to bite the piranhas. Um, mm -hmm. I think this mm -hmm. is the right mm -hmm. button. 13. 13 versus the AC of the swarm of piranha like creatures. That just hits. Nice. And then. I think this is the right button. About six damage. Six damage. All right. What's uh? What's what's the frog doing? Lashing on its tongue. <laughs> uh, yeah. And if it hits it, the piranhas are actually grappled. Cool. <laughs> All right. So um, tongue, its tongue shoots out in like curls around all the piranhas. Yeah, like, like a lasso, it sort of like zooms out or a rope and kind of wraps around the school of piranhas as they're trying to attempt to bite at him and he has them grappled. It's awesome. Um, and that's it for... That's all I can do. All right, good stuff. Uh, that brings us to you, Opie. Opie! He's just going to move over here and try to finish off these piranhas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's a 16 and a 29. Uh, both, both of those will hit, yes. What are these damage rolls? Kind of weird. Um, that's 12 piercing. Yeah, you loose an arrow into the swarm, and uh, it doesn't appear that it does as much just because it's a swarm of creatures. So your your arrow kind of catches a couple. The swarm still swims around at large. Damn. And swarm attack for two more damage. Okay, okay. Um, And then he's going to move... Gordon yeah. says, can a swarm be grappled? I, I would say yes in this end. It's a sticky tongue. He's going to move right there. And that's it for Opie. And so then it's Clyde. <laughs> this is just a meme, this <laughs> game now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Clyde, Clyde doesn't do anything. He just stays there. All right. So it's Uncle Jimmy. 
All right, Uncle Jimmy up next. Uh, I don't even know if I can get up there. Oh yeah, I can. I can get back down the hall. I can dash as a bonus action because rogues do things like that. Take my movement up to here, pull out my uh, hand crossbow pointed at it, and I assume the, the frog counts as friendly. Yes. No. <laughs> the frogs hate you. Yeah, Discordian, I'm going to say that it, it, in this instance, since they're already grappled, that the frogs have sticky tongues. They can grapple Discordian. these creatures. Discordian! <laughs> you know it's cool! How did it happen? Does a 16 oh. hit? Uh, 16 hits. It's a big old fat 20. Uh, 20 piercing damage? Yes. All right, you strike hard. You see blood pull in the waters, uh, but still two or three of the swarm kick around. With the last of my movement, because I have friends in the hallway, I'm going to move to the other side to open. Okay, okay. Call it a turn. Uh, Inky! <laughs> Inky doesn't do anything. He just stays there. Time! Um, Inky... I think I'm, I I can't get there in time to do anything, I feel like. So I might just stay in the room, I think, with Lincoln. Lincoln. Yes, stay here with me, alone, <laughs> where no one can hear you scream. I'll move here just so I can see out the the, the tunnel, but... Uh, Close I'll... the door behind you. <laughs> I'll take the dodge action for chick kicks and giggles. All right. And end my turn. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know what happened. More hands just suddenly appeared and stabbed Tyne 38 times. Lincoln's <laughs> uh, in the other room taking all the hands, putting them on, on his. <laughs> all right. The swarm is going to attempt to attack, but there's much less of them this time. So let's see if they're going to actually hit or not. Uh, they strike and totally miss this time. Uh, it oh looks God. as though Blinky survived. Uh, Pinky! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Pinky's gonna say that! Lincoln! Oh, uh, Lincoln's going to investigate this room. Um, what's going on with uh, Mr. Skeleton Man over here? Uh, give me a check, please. Oh, you would say that, wouldn't you? Um... <laughs> Okay, uh, sur survival. Um, uh, yeah, that'll that'll tell you some stuff about maybe what happened. First. Yeah, we'll do that. Eight. <laughs> Hold Diffic on. Do I have no? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Uh, it's really difficult to tell what ultimately became of why this person is a corpse now, Lincoln, but you do notice as you look down at the uh, ends of the bony wrists of the skeletal figure, there are no skeletal hands attached. Thanks. Oh, jeez. Okay, and he doesn't have, like, any, like, stuff on him? Like, no loot or anything uh, like that? I'll say give me a perception check. Oh, no. Hold on, let me roll with disadvantage. <laughs> How, yeah. How do you do that in roll twenty? Is it Hold shift? Control. Control. Okay. Control. Yeah. Oh, really? Shift is for advantage. Nine. Not terrible, I guess. You know what? I'm gonna use a plus one and make it ten. Mmm. Good. With a ten, you're able to see, although tattered and aged to some degree, there appears to be a small. Uh, broken sort of cloth bag, or ripped I should say cloth bag underneath the pile of the corpses rags and stuff that makes up the last bits of its sort of tattered clothing I if I still have actions left I'll pick it up and look inside sure uh, you pick it up and look inside inside you find 54 gold pieces oh dang and a I uh, po yeah, pocket those, and you also find a note as you unfurl it and read it. Uh, it mentions, uh, it's a little difficult to read because of the, the drained and smudged nature of the ink on the page from the sort of just wet nature of the area around here. 
but in small pockets of what you can make out, it appears as though this was a member of the Blightners and they were having a meeting, the last bits of their meeting in what appears to be the previous uh, headquarters of the Blightners, which was this mine here. They were talking about relocating to their headquarters in Karnak and they were planning on having a meeting about a alternative entryway into the underground floor of their headquarters, uh, but said oh. that they were going to attend the meeting uh, that is further inside of the... Okay, well, a reason for us to keep going. I pocket the gold for now mm -hmm. and use the rest of my movement to move over here just to see if there's anything I can see. And that's, that's it. Looks like maybe this was once a walkway, but it has been collapsed in since then. Uh, you're diff you're unsure how like thick you'd have to, to try and you know, you're, you're not sure how far the stone from the collapse wall kind of runs before it would open up to the other end of the hallway, right? Um, but that's what you see there. I would rather just kill the piranhas. I'm done. Sure. Uh, Professor Bark, you're up. Uh, poison spray. Throw a little, another little vial at him. Uh, make an EC 14 constitution save. Uh, this time, they fail. Wow, boom, big time. 17 points of poison. You Game. chuck another vial into the waters as the waters grow this sort of caustic green and brown. And as the waters begin to diffuse and turn this deep, deep dark blue, you now see bobbing up, hitting the top wall of the kind of collapsed area here, uh, what look like just corpses of what was once these piranha-like fish. They are dead. Cool. I tell everybody about the thing that I found and suggest that we keep swimming up past the piranhas. I'm going to uh, just, if I can take a quick check, get a bunch of the bones of the piranhas while we're walking. Yeah, they're they're uh, like they're tiny, but you could try and gather. Some I was gonna trip. say that Inky just kind of like shovels the <laughs> yeah. corpse. If and yeah, them if you can, there's like two or so left that you have to like wrestle away from Inky. <laughs> I just shake my head and look at Inky and just feed him the fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hungry baby. Dude, Blinky's such a champion. He tanked those piranhas and lived. Yeah, he did. Was this a one-time use breadcrumbs or do you keep these? Breadcrumbs, um, I talked to Jason about it. They're technically just like a component, like, and I have a component pouch, so. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna love having these little buddies for the whole yeah. rest of the camp. <laughs> yes. I okay. have unlimited four frogs. Opie truly was kind of half eating the bread at the helper's hangout and shoving the rest into the pockets. Yeah. <laughs> um, Opie's gonna go in Swim ahead. Okay. Just pushing underneath the waters, Opie. You press forward. You can kind of see the area open up up ahead. And, uh, yeah, it kind of opens up into some deeper waters. And you do see what appears to be another swarm of uh, these piranha-like fish that haven't noticed you yet. They're just sort of kicking around in the waters. Um, do we want to go this way, y'all think? Piranhas don't seem so bad. I think we can probably handle them. Okay, Opie is gonna go. He's gonna go back. Tell everybody about the piranhas. Um, I would say also, Opie. Does this look like shallow area? Yes. Yeah, I was, I to was say. gonna say, yeah. On that side, it looks like the waters, the 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 ground in the depths ascends, and the water, uh, or the roof pulls back up, so you could ascend back to shallow ground. Okay, then Opie's gonna. S He's going to say, say that. I assume everybody's like, okay, let's go get the piranhas. And then he's going to send in all his frogs. <laughs> awesome. Um, and my intent is for the frogs to just, like, surround the piranhas or, like, block their way so that, like, people can get through this way real quick. Okay. Um, so I'd I don't know what kind of like role you want for that, Jason, or what. I'm not going to ask for a role. I will say your frogs will distract the swarm of piranhas enough for you all to get over there if everyone wants to go, but you may lose a frog or two in the process. Sure. Um, that's fine. Okay. Dead frogs for the dead frog guy. Yeah. So we just like fast travel up there right now? Yeah, each of you can kind of press on and, and swim up there. 
Okay. Well, yeah, there's no reason for him to be too close. Uh, oh, Blinky really dies. No, Blinky! Blinky! He was, he was a hero. <laughs> he was the best of us. Pinky dies. No! no! Pinky! Pinky! Inky gets pretty bloodied, but at that point, the frogs finally finish off what's left of the swarm and begin eating them. Hilarious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just gotta peek down this why, why everybody investigates uh, yeah, the other room. Show you that that leads on to a narrow passage that goes deep for just like just a second before ascending up again. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. Just around the corner, Forte, you see, and I'll move the map here for those of you on the stream. You're able to see what looks like a humanoid figure of just skeletal remains standing in old algae covered what looks like sort of leather armor a bow at one side a sword in the other they just slowly stand there you can hear the creak of their bones uh, as they just sort of slowly turn their head occasionally left to the it doesn't appear as though they'd notice you yet anything down this way that we can see or oh, is yeah, it going like, underwater let, let me show you here you'd be able to see it opens up into an area that's underwater there Ears that there may be a path both north and south. You get the sense that in that room over here, going south, is the area that you could have initially gone on the left side. I think we should split the group. I uh, did not think I heard that correctly. Um, uh, I will return to the water. Uh, okay. <laughs> I want to. I want to go in the water. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to be in the water. <laughs> you dive into the waters, Lincoln. Uh, up ahead appears to be uh, what would have been a pathway through, but is blocked off by some collapsed wall, like fully closing off the area. M maybe it's able to be dug through. You're just not sure how far the stonework goes and how long that'd take. Behind you, the waters continue to stay deep up until they give rise again, leading you back to the initial area that you entered this place in. Killing time. Okay. Lincoln returns. We still have passed without trace up if you guys want to try to sneak up on it. Yeah, that's yeah. why even this close, they haven't been alerted yet, because you guys are very, very quietly shifting through the waters. We've Super, super quiet. So, uh, Jimmy's a uh, backstabber. Maybe you can sneak right up to it and shake. Yeah. Is this shake a, before he even knows. Is this a column or can I stand there? Uh, you could stand there. I don't know what this is. Okay. Oh, please. It's wait. an altar. I'm yeah. going to look to the group and just kind of nod and point to myself and point up there, waiting, uh, asking. Essentially, should I go up there? Do you guys mind? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Shank him. Go kill him. You got to pass without trace. I'm, I'm in range for it. Yeah. Want me to make a another stealth check? Uh, no. You are stealthy enough. You can just go ahead and make your attack roll. All right. Get up to about there if I can get line of sight. Yeah, you can just see the barest hint of him as you turn. He does turn to notice you or begin to notice you, but you're able to get your shot off. Uh, huh? It's a uh, 14. 14 I will hit. A... Oh, thank God. What's your... Uh, what you call it? Blinky hands, yeah. Mm. That's, that's, uh, that's a... That's a... 23. Yeah, that's not bad. Pretty good. True, true. Yeah. 23 piercing damage. Oh, what does it look like when you take down the skeletal figure? Right. An old Skyrim style, just straight in the head, and he slowly falls back in a weird slow motion, janky cinematic. <laughs> Well, he bounce, bounces up again for a second. <laughs> yeah, he gets like stuck in the ground weird, and so his model's just going like this. His, his arm starts shooting up way higher than it should. Yeah. I loot his helmet, which gives me all of his loot. Um, I, I look to Lincoln, and I point to him, 
and I point up and down, suggesting that there's a whole brand new him just sitting right over in the corner. Killed your cousin. <laughs> so many bones. I assure you, if you killed him, he was not related to me. Mm-mm. Yeah. Those um, are bones, I promised you. Right there, buddy. Go for it. Give me, now that you're out of the waters and the sound has died down a little bit, give me perception check. Ooh. Everyone? Everyone. Except all your frogs. That's disadvantage for me. Perception. Ooh, Forte! Forte, Forte, my, Forte. My frogs are gonna do perception checks just for funsies. <laughs> oh, one of them got 18. Uh, Thank you. Anybody above a 15, you hear what sounds Maybe. like up ahead, although the initial turn here past the first skeleton seems to be collapsed in, there is an area up ahead that you know, curls around, and you do hear the sounds of soft creaking bone, similar to the one that you just heard or initially that you took down. Uh, I look to them and point up ahead and slowly start to sneak forward and see what I can see. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and give me a still I, I gotta move. I gotta move with him so he stays in range of the pass yeah, without trace. Yeah. Give me a, both of you give me a still check. I'm sure they'll be amazing. Oh my god! Twenty-four yeah. and thirty-four. Uh, uh, Uncle Uncle Jimmy, like his he like predator. He just starts his body just disappears. <laughs> Cloaks. <laughs> Want some candy? <laughs> uh, you peek around the corner, Uncle. See, it goes on into a long hallway that ends up in a dead end with a collapsed wall and a path to the left. Okay. Get a skinny pad. Anything up at these rocks here? Are they like special rocks or just... No, you don't even need to uh, check. They're just like limestone here with a little bit of uh, different coloration than the rest of the rocks. What if they have healing properties? We should spend 15 minutes failing checks to see. (laughs) It's It's just like the well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh god, no. Oh no. Uh, I'd forgotten about there must that. Be something. You guys there remember those to... two limestone rocks? <laughs> <laughs> you spent 45 minutes on. Uh, uh, peak my long lanky. Awkward. Yeah, peer, peering around the corner. You see a room that at, at least mm. now seems to have some stuff in it. What looks to be old algae covered bed rolls. Um Another skeletal figure just sort of standing, uh, almost like l- if it had eyes, looking listlessly sort of off at a nearby wall. Um, and then in the far corner, what appears to be some type of chest. I'm going to stop pinging because that's what makes my CPU go wild. I don't know why. I don't know why, Roll20. Pingus. Yeah, because it animates. I'm going to point around the corner and take the aim action. Don't ping aim. everyone. Stop. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a treasure chest. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Could I? It's right yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I actually thought it was this rock over here. Oh my God. I, I, <laughs> I see I myself lagging on the stream. <laughs> oh, there's, there's there. Remember these rocks over here? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Did you right. those rocks? Let's. Wait, you're sorry, attack- you're attacking this these guy. Are, these ones? These rocks? No, this uh, no, 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 no. My this computer rocks. will die. <laughs> this is this is how we win. We replace its computer. We'll we stream them. next week, guys. My computer overheated and caught on fire. <laughs> the final game. The final boss. The game. <laughs> Jimmy, take out the skeleton. It's a 24 to hit. Oh, total hit. Man, this uh, pass without trace, like, fucking entire mini dungeon clutch. It's a good spell. It's phenomenal. Quite. Um. Wow. Oh. 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 Yeah. W- what's it look like, Uncle Jimmy, when you just put this undead creature down? Uh, same thing, but it kind of clips his shoulder, and it counts as a headshot still for some ungodly reason. Are we still doing <laughs> Skyrim rolls? <laughs> We've played it all week. <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, I I I whisper back to the group that it's all clear up ahead. 
This skeleton definitely clips through the floor and you can't loot it anymore. <laughs> it, was, it does a thing where like one of the femur bones is like spinning perpetually. <laughs> the physics engine were messed up. <laughs> Gotta reload what? the room. <laughs> Alright, so there's there's another skeleton here and there's a treasure chest down here. I'm gonna take... Since uh, Jimmy's being cautious because there's undead things in there, I'm gonna take a perception check on the chest first. Okay. Slim the person is afraid that that's a mimic and he doesn't know if the chain is showing or not. Sure, Damn, sure. Tynar, fuck. Right? Um, damn, time. What's the medicine check? I was checking out the skeleton. See maybe how it died or just anything I can get from that check. Time looks to me. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> That's a 12 perception for me. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll do this. So let me let me first just try and see if we can. Now that you've explored most of this map, I want to try and turn fucking stuff off of this map. I can't believe it. World 20, you point me. Why is your <laughs> fog of war? Guys, World 20 is a program that you can use if you pay money. Other options <laughs> are available. <laughs> uh, okay. With your 12 perception check on Uncle Jimmy, it doesn't look like there's anything wild going on with this chest, but similar to the doors, another familiar lock keeps this one closed tight. And then right. Tyne, with your check, uh, let me just... Daddy 20, baby. Yeah, this is going to give you some info that can normally to be perceived. Go back here. Let me scroll down. Da, 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 da. Oh, in just a second. Noodle just tasted some of the coke off of my coke can. It's weird. <laughs> It'd be good for her. What That's cat? Amazing. What cat wants coke? I do. <laughs> Mommy, give me coke. Noodle. <laughs> Spicy bubbles. <laughs> She's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we will end this session because we're at time by saying that Tyne, oh, as you study the corpse, you notice the chest cavity of the rib cage seems to bow and bend in a uh, unnatural state. And with your natural twenty roll, you get the sense that something was happening with this humanoid, and. Something either dug into their chest or dug out. Not sure. uh, could we, uh, for sake of loot, am I allowed to try and pick the chest before we end? Yes, try and pick the chest. Our help with it, Brandon. Oh, wait, pick no, the it chest. On the pick the chest. <laughs> if, if it's sleight of hand, Lincoln can help. Alright, awesome. That's a big old fat natty one. Oh, oh my god. Mm. Hey, with, with advantage. With, uh, er, yeah. no, he like he's he's better, rolling though. straight roll, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your your oh, your wait, pick I didn't, try. I didn't try. Yeah, I was gonna I say, know. Uncle Jimmy, you work at it, but unfortunately one of your picks nearly breaks as you quickly pull it out and uh, aren't able to get this thing unlocked. Jim Jim the, the, I'm, I'm gonna give Professor Bark advantage. Be like, this is where I fucked up. I'm telling you, I I'm sorry. I here, look, I even <laughs> broke my pick and I chuck my pick against the wall. Oh, well, well, I did a little better. Advantage. <laughs> it wasn't a one. Well, he's exhausted too, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm proficient with thieves tools. I think oh. I think we could use Forte's lock opener again. Run out of the way. <laughs> Lincoln takes a skeletal finger and just like pokes it into the lock hole and fishes it around. Sure, cool sure. Is that? Uh, slide a hand. Here we go. Great. That's how it's okay. done. <laughs> Ding. Um, Lincoln, you hear a snap as you pull back your hand. Your finger's gotten stuck and popped off, but 
the lock actually opens as you kind of grab at your finger and kind of pull it back out, working it back the way you put it in. What? All according to plan. I was, you can, can make grab a... another one from this guy. Yeah, or you can make a piranha finger. <laughs> uh, popping the chest open, Lincoln, inside, you find what looks to be several pouches of gold for a total of 362. Jesus. Probably the coffers of those that used to be here. Uh, you find a potion of healing. And another vial. Uh, another vial that seems to hold a black murky liquid in it and written on the side, Lincoln. It reads, a potion of invisibility. Um, I, I went ahead and put the gold in our party gold. Good call. I still have the uh, dust of disappearance with that, man. We have a full uh, stealth group. Uh, who's the second most stealthy? I have plus seven. Stealth? I get a plus nine. Wait a second. We you should give are. it to the least stealthy. Let's give it to, yeah. to fucking Forte, who's yeah. clanging around all the time. For sure. <laughs> They're just going to be confused. What? I Show yourself. No one's here. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm down a healing potion, so I'll take the potion if nobody needs it. Little twelve-year-old meme references. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it's just a, a, re a regular potion of healing. Yeah, base, basic potion of healing inside. All right, I'll add that. Put it in the backpack. All right. With that, uh, now that you've looted this small area here, you you go through like the sacks and stuff of the what appears to be some sort of makeshift sleeping quarters, uh, but don't find anything other of note here. So with this area plundered, and what appears to be just sort of a last bit area on the map left to explore, that's where we'll wrap this session because we're at time. Um, thank you all for playing. It's super fun and very relaxing to play with you all at the end. Of the day. Uh, nice mental break and good time and thank you everyone else for hanging out on the stream with us thank you so much ashley for all those subs that was very kind of you thank you for stopping in joka and uh, esper and mirza that was very kind of you mirza is probably morning for you i uh, happy to have you all i hope you enjoyed uh keep in mind that you can do some fun stuff um in terms of your twitch channel points and speaking of uncle jimmy you are still elated and Professor Bark, I need to remember, you're still forlorn. So don't forget about oh, yeah. that. Hey, uh, uh, Jason. Uh huh. I, I, just a personal quick shout out to him. Uh, in, we uh, we all started getting together and playing like unofficially almost like six years ago. Within the next couple of days, so I, uh, at least from I know from us to him, thank you for uh, running us for uh, six years in D and D. Holy crap! You got Thanks, it, man. bud. Happy birthday yeah. to you. Happy birthday, Mr. J. And hey, we hit 700 followers on the Twitch channel today. Thank Amazing, you all so dude. much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be at 697 come Monday and we'll have to climb back up top. But small victories, everyone. Good stuff. Uh, so thank you all for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Take care of yourselves. We'll be back for some more weirdkin throughout the week next week. Uh, so that's a fun way to play along with the channel. You are all tamers who get to actually roll the dice yourselves and play along with me in some uh, playable interactive D&D. &D. Uh, yeah, there's a link. Thank you, Kevin. Go check it out. Go look at the PDF and read up all about it. And uh, if you have questions, hit us up in the Discord. And uh, go check us out over there. Thank you, Esper, for sharing that link there. I appreciate it. Yeah, go follow the Discord, those who haven't. And if you enjoyed the channel and haven't followed yet, hit that follow button so you get notifications on when we go live. We're headed out for the evening. Thank you all so much. I will see you all Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Uh, before we go, I should raid somebody. Let me do that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody on the stream. Uh, stick around, though, those of you who want some more D&D. For some of you, it may be morning time, and you may want to keep uh, kind of lurking and, and checking out other people's channels. For us, that's it for the day. Goodbye, everybody! Bye! What do you guys think happened? One of the players Robbie played with got carried away and killed him. That's kind of far out. Mazes and monsters is a far out game. Swords, poison, spells, battles, maiming, killing. Hey, it's all imagination. Is it? <laughs>